If we had, yes, donate to the school, dollar sign FDMG school on your cash app. 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 If you need to mail in your donation, make it payable to the FDMG Academy, P.O. Box 9634. P.O. Box 9634. P.O. Box 9634, Wilmington, Delaware. That is Wilmington, Delaware, 19809. We appreciate $1, but we would rather have 10. We appreciate $20, but we would rather have 50. We appreciate $50, but we would rather have 100. We appreciate $100, but we would rather have 200. We're trying to renovate a school, brothers and sisters. We're trying to renovate a school. We're not fixing a, we're not fixing a, fixing a flat tire. We're not fixing a flat tire. We're not opening up a penny candy shop. We're not selling water ices, okay? We're not selling hot dogs. We're renovating a school. Do you understand? Do you understand? So please, brothers and sisters, give what you can. We're building an institution. Okay? We're trying to give our children a chance that we didn't have. That's what we're doing. I don't have to pin it because I didn't already told you what it is. Don't be lazy. Dollar sign FDMG school. Don't be lazy. Dollar sign FDMG school. Before I continue with my message, thank you, Sister Avanti, $10 coming on the cash app. Thank you, Sister. Next time, make it 20 but thank you for that 10 I know you barely had that. Thank you, Sister. All right, Cookie Crush Chat undefeated. We got another live stream tonight. Probably get one in tomorrow. Make sure y'all hit the like button. Cookie Crush Chat is undefeated. Let's go. FDMG is coming. FDMG is coming. FDMG is coming. It's coming. Hold on. Yeah. Nah, I got this. I got this. I got this. FDMG is coming, FDMG is coming, FDMG is coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's coming, it's coming, oh, it's coming, FDMG is coming, FDMG is coming, thought it's personality, be twerking, it's twerking. There you go. There he go. Every time. Every time. Welcome, Cookie Crush Chat. I hope y'all doing all right. Welcome to another live stream. We're going to have a short show tonight, but we probably will get probably get back tomorrow. Okay, There's been so much going on. And I was thinking, I don't think we're ever going to get caught up. I took an eight-month break, and I got so behind. And Umar is always on social media. And it's hard to keep track. I want to thank everyone who sent me links. I've received at least, I'm going to say, six or seven emails and maybe more than that, a little more than that, of people sending me different things to look at. I get to what I can get to. And if then if I can get them into the show, I'll try to get them into the show. Otherwise, I'll put them into a folder. And hopefully I got in the folder that I'm going the video that we're watching now, the folder that I have for all this, there's probably about 12 videos in there. So I don't know how we're going to ever get caught up. I have no idea. But I want to thank you all so much. Thanks, everyone. Uh, in a quick crush chat, thanks to the mods for handling business as well. I want to thank, uh, thank all, everyone, the new subscribers. We've got a lot of new subscribers lately. Um, I don't follow how many subscribers I have, but I do know that we've been trying to get to 70 for like many months, 70,000. 
And it looks like we're going to get there very, very soon. So because Umar has been out here in the uh, Internet streets and the social media streets causing a ruckus, a lot of new people are, are finding uh, this content and are learning the truth about Umar Johnson. And so the subscribers are going up. So uh, I want to thank everyone. New people here, old people here, everybody in between. Thank you all so much for tuning on in. Um, there's a couple of things I want to get to today. And the one thing I can say about Umar is that he that, that consistently he asks for money and consistently he goes at people unprovoked. And then when someone comes back at him, he acts like he's the victim and he does it over and over and over again. And he mainly targets successful black men, but it's not exclusive to that but mainly targets successful black men. In fact, we put together a list and it's not a uh, comprehensive list, but it's just enough to get the idea. And most recently, uh, because he was on the Joe Button podcast and his, uh, some of his comments have gone viral, he brought up Roland Martin. And Roland Martin recently did a video to respond to Umar's uh, talking ill of him on the Roland Martin show. Here's the other thing about Umar, he's, he's petty and he holds grudges for a long time. See, I don't hold grudges, and I was upset with Umar because he docks my personal information. He issued physical threats of violence. He told his, his so-called goony goons to come and see me and all this kind of stuff. I didn't appreciate that. You know, I, I didn't appreciate that at all. Uh, he's lied on me. He's lied on me on the Lord Jamar show, called me everything but a child of God. Uh, and so I did. I took it personally for a while. I don't have that these days. I want him to do better. But with Umar, he'll bring up stuff from four, five, six, seven years ago. He still takes shots at Tariq Machine be behind Hidden Colors. And I don't even know. It could crush that. When was Hidden Colors one? Wasn't that like in 20, uh, I don't know, 2012? I don't know. Maybe before that. I, don't, I can't even remember. I don't know. But the point is, he's always taking shots at people and he won't let stuff go. And so he gets on the. Um, Joe Budden podcast, and he goes at um, a little bit at least. He goes at Roland Martin, and so Roland Martin did uh, a response video. We won't get into that because I, I, I let me tell y'all something, and I could be wrong, but Umar Johnson's Roland Martin interview is probably one of his most viewed uh, videos. Meaning, out of all the Umar Johnson videos, it's gotten the most amount of views, or it's up there. Okay. In fact, it may be the video that has gotten the most amount of views to date dealing with Umar. And uh, I'm not a fan of Roland Martin's per se. Uh, I don't watch his content. I never have. Um, he's more into the political arena for the most part, uh, from what I remember. And po politics is not my lane. Uh, but I do I do uh, have uh, reservations uh, and I should say um, critique for how they handled Umar when they had him on. And in particular, uh, I, I totally get it. When Roland Martin says no more, we're not going to do racial epithets. That was great because it shouldn't be happening in the first place. Uh, that was great how he handled that. He put his foot down. But Umar, he takes that kind of thing personally. Anytime people speak out against him or, you know, uh, challenge him on anything, he just goes off the rails. Umar goes off the rails. And um, I don't like how the setup was to where they had basically uh, a panelist and of the three other panelists. Uh, two of them were growing at Umar and it, and it, uh, Roland Martin was a bit aggressive, but in a, in a respectful way. And I didn't feel like they should have did Umar like that. That's just how I looked at it. And I still look at it to this day. I don't think that it was fair for them to do Umar like that. Um, if you're going to have a debate about something, just do it one on one. OK, or if you want to moderate, if, if uh, Roland Martin wants to moderate and then have one of the other people who wants to speak out against Umar. OK, well, just those two people. But how they did it. Uh, I, I didn't appreciate that. So I'm not a Roland Martin uh, defender or supporter for that matter. Uh, but I do know that what he did and how he handled Umar Johnson, uh, you know, using racial epithets, I think that that was admirable. So anyway, Umar brings that whole thing up on uh, Joe Budden's podcast. People have been talking about it. Roland Martin finds out about it. And so he does a video. We won't cover it. And he goes back at Umar. And then Umar does a video, and that's the video, at least one of the videos we're going to get in here today. Now, we won't have a long, a long show today. Um, I did a lot of content last week, but we'll, we're going to get to as much as we can. But I will be back tomorrow, and we'll be back tomorrow to get into some more of these receipts. Um,
there was something else I was going to mention dealing with Roland Martin. I can't I can't remember. Oh, no, the, the uh, one of the guys, I can't remember what his name is because he he's not very well known. But one of the guys that was on it that was going at Umar, I remember at some point, and this was a couple of years ago, uh, he he was like, yeah, well, Umar, uh, if you want to do a boxing match or something, anyone else remember this? And I want to say this, that with Umar, there's so much beef that happens and a lot of it he instigates. He doesn't instigate it all the time, but most of the time he instigates it and then he plays the victim. But when it gets to that point and people are talking about how, you know, they want to uh, box or they want to fight or they want to pull up, that just goes too far. And it's a bad look. It's a really bad look. But the thing is that these types of things are always surrounding Umar. But that's because he's always running his mouth and he's always taking shots at black men who are more successful in life than he is. Now, they may not be as successful getting money out of people for a school that doesn't exist. They may not be as successful living sexually promiscuous lifestyle and crushing cookies. Uh, they may not be su as successful in terms of dodging child support. OK, they may not be as successful in terms of oratory, but in terms of every in, in every aspect of life that truly matters as a man, they're more successful than him. In fact, let's do this. In a cookie crush chat. Uh, just list some of the names of the people that Umar has gone at over the years okay just list them okay and i'll read them out I'll, I'll i'll just come up with some right now lord jamar uh he's gone at roland martin he's gone at lebron james he's gone at lebron james's son he's gone after Jalen rose i remember he went at uh game you remember y'all uh paru uh he he went at game <laughs> he went at that other rapper i can't remember his name right now <laughs> uh he's gone after shannon sharp uh, he's gone after, uh, I remember he was talking uh, reckless about Martin Luther King. I remember he was talking, yeah, I know, I forgot about that. Yeah, he he, he went at me, but I, I don't consider myself to be on, on that same level with, with these type of people. But yeah, he went at me. <laughs> he went at Seti. He went at Kobe Bryant. He's gone at Kobe Bryant's wife more recently. Uh, no respect for the living or for the dead for that matter she's a widow and he takes it upon himself to talk uh reckless about her that just goes to show you what type of man he is he's gone after hassan campbell he sure has yeah he's gone after hassan campbell um uh, who else i mean i, I should pull up he's gone after he always going after Tariq. he's been taking shots at Tariq since hidden color day this is non-stop he's gone after colby he's gone after kevin durant uh durant uh he's gone he's gone at everybody except his mama <laughs> <laughs> you might do that soon, and ready to be honest with you. Ain't no telling on him. <laughs> Jalen Rose, yeah. Uh, he's going after Young Fellow. Uh, yeah, excuse me, Young Pharaoh. Uh, I don't remember him going after Nipsey. I don't remember him going after Nipsey. But if you say he did, Ed, then I'll take your word for it. He's going after Cynthia G. Uh, Daniel Kaluuya. I don't even know who that is. Okay, <laughs> someone said DG. He always going after Deion Sanders and the kids. He always go after Deion Sanders. He's going after Eminem. Yeah, it's a ton of black people, though. It, it's a ton. We, I have a list. I, I should go find it and pull it up. I don't remember him going after Francis Chris Wilson. Though. I don't think he's done that. Yeah, Freddie Gibbs. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, Freddie Gibbs. How's it going, uh, Shay uh, and Dominique? What's up, man? Uh, James Harden. Yeah, he's gone to James Harden. He's got a lot of athletes. He's gone a lot of, uh, the, He's gone after you, too. <laughs> Some of y'all he done gone after. Sandy, brother Jose, his breath. <laughs> you know it's bad when you go after your own breath. <laughs> He go after everybody. He yeah, especially when Barack Obama was in in office, he went at Barack Obama like every week. <laughs> okay, every week. Uh, Freddie Gibbs. He went after Mike Tyson. I remember that too. Uh, Sabir Bay. Yeah, they had beef for a while too. I remember that. Uh, Tito Jackson. <laughs> no, he didn't go after no Tito Jackson. Say it ain't so, Sal. But we can go on and on and on. He he's gone. Yeah, of course. MC Shan, Ed Lover, uh, Jay Z. Then he asked him for money. He went after Beyonce. Then asked Jay Z for money. I said, "What kind of man?" He's going after Sean Netter. Uh, so it's like every. I mean, we can we, Seti. Yeah, of course we can. We can do a show on each one of the beefs and and or each of the uh, black men that he and it, it would be uh, I don't know uh, 40, 50, 60 shows. I mean, we can run down. It, it just go on forever. But I have I have a more. He's gone to Tommy Sotomayor. Yeah, I remember uh, that that was going on. What's up, uh, Bradley? How's it going? Uh, James Brown. Well, no, he didn't go out to no James Brown. And Whitney Houston. Y'all just throwing anything out there. No, he didn't go out to no Kenya Martin. Brian, come on now. Kenya Martin. <laughs> that was one of my favorite basketball players back in the day. Tom, he's yeah, going to Tasha K. Okay. Anyway, we, we can uh, Betty Crocker. <laughs> 
Uncle Ben. <laughs> just start throwing all kinds of stuff. But seriously, Kevin Samuels, okay? Again, Kevin Samuels is not my cup of tea, but he did go at Kevin Samuels. Uh, Jay Morrison, much deserved. Uh, he went at Polite one time, too. Um, the list goes on and on and on. <laughs> yeah, black plumbers, black electricians. Okay, he started to blame them, said they were stealing from the school. Again, it, it just goes on. Yeah, he, he went at Mike Tyson. He sure did, Christopher. Hit the one. Y'all remember that. I'm, we're not making it up. He sure did. Yeah, he. I know I was like, <laughs> yeah, we'd like to see that. Uh, <laughs> he went at Webster. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Quaker Oats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He went at Quaker Oats and Grits. He always going at Grits. He, he always going at Grits. Okay, hey, we went to put up that in Jay Z. Yeah. Okay, we can go on. Brother Wit, he went at Brother Wit. Matter of fact, I have. Y'all want to pull it up? <laughs> I look so long. I look. I've looked for so long to find this because there's three. There's three or four videos. It's a five-hour full video stream, but they broke it up, and I had to. And I put it on two times. You know, like uh, speed. And I look so long, and it's at the end of this one video. And someone had requested it, and, I, and he sent in a cash app, cash app request, and I always got to fulfill those. And I finally found it. I'm going to play it today, I promise. Okay, I promise. I promise. I put that on God. <laughs> put that on the homies. Yeah, okay. He, Of course, he always going at the Bugs Bunny. He, he, he can't leave. <laughs> yeah, he's going at his baby mamas. Okay, anyway, the point is um, that... Uh, <laughs> You know that's bad when you go at Aunt your mama. We say ain't your mama, as we said back in the day. <laughs> yeah, he went at Chief. He did go at Chief a little bit. I didn't appreciate that. He went at Kenny G. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> okay, no, seriously, let's get back on track because we already get what's up, X Freeman? We already getting blowed off. Okay. <laughs> Someone said Aunt Jemima. He went at pajama mamas. We know that. He went crazy off of pajama mamas. If y'all ain't seen the Pajama Wama episode, make sure you check that one out. <laughs> okay. I know. I know. It's so ridiculous. Okay. I think we're all good uh, here. Let's, uh, <laughs> someone says Shaba ranks. <laughs> okay. So let's get, let's get tuned in here because I want, I don't want to have a long show. I want to get um, uh, through this relatively quickly. We got a lot of stuff to get caught up on and I want to have a relatively uh, short show, but we'll come back tomorrow and get to some more stuff. Let, uh, let's uh, do this. Uh, we're going to pull up the video where Umar responds to um, Roland Martin. I haven't watched it yet, but what I'm going to do, we're going to play it. And then I'm going to go find this, uh, the, the Brother Wit video, because I did find it. And then we'll play that a little bit later. OK, uh, Lynn, I was watching a political show and uh, uh, dude, dude said raw money and almost ran. <laughs> <What? laughs> The guy on the political show said raw money, like Umar says, raw cash. <laughs> we, we need that raw cash, family. I'm going to laugh, too. I ain't going to lie about it. Yeah, yeah, he is. Now, he, he always been a suspect. <laughs> he done gone, I don't think he went. He better not go on with Little Richard. That's, that's uh-uh. I ain't playing that. <laughs> raw cash. Okay, so let's get into it. Good question. Thank you all so much. Oh, let me get to these super chats real quick. Uh, Lewis Suck says, uh, you being, uh, uh, see, you are being written up for your tardiness. This is a verbal warning. The next, the verbal warning, the next, uh, next one will result in automatic termination and, and repossession of. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know I'm so bad. This, this has to be my new year's resolution, resolution to, to be ready to go, ready to go. Sometimes I'm here, but I'm still doing stuff or. You know, I, I can make all excuses. I can just come up with all, but I'm not going to do that. I need to do better. Okay. I need to do better and I will do better. Allegedly. <laughs> okay. I ain't going to hold me to it. I'm just going to say allegedly. All right. No, I'm, I'm going to try. I'm, I'm really going to do my best tomorrow. Show, matter of fact, tomorrow show, I'm going to be on time. I'm going to be so on time. I'm going to be waiting on y'all. Okay. Thanks for the super chat, Lewis. Look. Seth says uh, eighth of a job. Yeah, yeah, he went after eighth of a job. <laughs> that was one of the funniest things because we were trying to figure out what that lady was saying. I thought she said, I don't know what she was saying at first. Eighth of a, I don't know, corn on a cob. Then someone said it's a song that's called eighth of a job. Yeah. Thanks for Super Chat, uh, Seth Lofton. Y'all remember that uh, football player? He was one of my favorite football players back in the day. Was it James Lofton? I think it was James Lofton. He, he played for the, um, 
uh, the Bills. Yeah, he played for the Bills. He was one of my favorite uh, back, uh, football players back in the day. He was a wide receiver for back when they had Jim Kelly and Thurman Thomas. And uh, what was the defensive guy? He was really good. I can't remember him his name right now, but he he was really good. Um, uh, thanks for super chat, Seth, Seth Loft, Lofton. A lady says, uh, "Vu, what made your mom leave?" Uh, Joe. Oh, you talking about me? Uh, I can't even say that she left per se. I, I can't. I, I think you're asking me. Yeah, we we grew up as as Joe witnesses. Um, I never I never was uh, into it or dedicated to it. Um, and uh, at a certain point, like I was like, no, nah, I, I just uh, it was something else. That's a whole other story for another time. Um, but I don't even know if my mom has officially left per se. Is she active? No. But there are a lot of people, Joe witnesses, who they're not active but they still consider themselves to be Jehovah's Witnesses. But I, th I guess that's the same thing with, with any religion. You know, there's people who still go to church or who don't go to church, but they still say, oh, you know, I'm Christian and blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, the Arrogant People says, uh, Seti, Brother Jose. Yeah, I got that one earlier. Thank you so much. And thanks, a lady, for Super Chat as well. Arrogant People, thank you. And then Lewis Luck, uh, he need to go after his barber line. <laughs> well, listen, Lewis Luck, I can't say nothing about that, obviously. So we're going to leave that one alone. <laughs> I can't say nothing about that at all. My hair line, boys. It's more of a suspect than the NBA family. Okay. Okay. So uh, thanks for doing that. Okay. Let's get into it. Here we go. So this is the video uh, of the Roland Martin. I think it's from yesterday. It might have been from the day before yesterday, but let's get started with this. I'm going to go pull up the uh, video of uh, Brother Witt, and then uh, I'll play that a little bit later on. Here we go. Yeah, I think he has Jamaica on. So I think he's in Jamaica right here. Just laying in the bed. He probably gonna look at the camera to start kissing one. Let me go get this brother wit. Peace and Pan Africanism, peace and Pan Africanism. Peace and Pan Africanism, peace and Pan Africanism. Peace and Pan Africanism, peace and Pan Africanism. This is your big brother, Dr. Umar Ifatunde Oguntade. This is your big brother, the notorious RBG. This is your big brother, Intercontinental Ifatunde, the Prince of Pan Africanism. And I'm coming to you live and direct from Miami, Florida. I'm coming to you live and direct from Miami, Florida. I'm coming to you live and yeah, I'm, direct. I'm sorry, I had my uh, mute button on. Yeah, it uh, looks like we've got 175 uh, likes. We've got 775 people in the building now. So if you all hit the like button, I appreciate it. Here we go. From Miami, Florida. First of all, for my Miami Africans, if you live in Miami, I have two questions. If you live in Miami, I have two questions. I'm talking to my American Africans in Miami. I'm talking to my continental Africans in Miami. I'm talking to my Latino, Latina Africans in Miami. I'm talking to my European Africans in Miami, my Australian Africans in Miami, my Canada Africans, my South American Africans, my Here Central you go. American Africans, my Africans in Asia, my South Pacific Africans. If you are in Miami, Florida, roll call. I need to know a good soul food, seafood, or African ethnic food restaurant. I repeat, he always asking for something. I just got off the flight from Jamaica. Shout out to my Jamaican Africans. Shout out to my Jamaican Africans. Shout out to my Jamaican Africans. I enjoyed the Maroon Fest in a compound. Can't wait to go back next year. It was great. Shout out to Chief Curry. Shout out to the whole Akong Pong Maroon Kingdom. It was fantabulous. Can't wait to come back. But now I'm back in America. And tomorrow I head to Central America. I said, I'm back from Jamaica. I'm overnight in Miami. And tomorrow I head to Central America for the first time. Where my Central American Africans at? Where my Central American Africans at? Where my Central American Africans at? Where my Central American Africans at, brothers and sisters? Where are my Central America 
America. <laughs> countries. Yeah, countries. We're my Guatemalan Africans. We're my El Salvador Africans. There we go. We're my Panamanian Africans. We're my Costa Rica Africans. We're my Honduran Africans. We're my Belize Africans. We're my Nicaragua Africans. We're my Mexican Africans, Colombian Africans. Where are my Central American Africans? I want to see everybody in Panama. Tomorrow, I'm pulling up in Panama City. Tomorrow, I'm pulling up in Panama City, and on Wednesday, I'm speaking in Cologne City at the same park Marcus Garvey spoke. I repeat. You can speak in the park? Okay. I will be keynoting in Cologne City on... You going to keynote at a park? Is that what you're saying? Okay. On Wednesday, Cologne City, Panama on Wednesday in the same park that the most honorable Marcus <laughs> Messiah. Yeah, he'd be going on vacation. He don't have a job. He on vacation all day, every day, every month. He on vacation, just traveling, eating good. Matter of fact, there was a video of him shopping for food. I I, I don't I don't know if y'all want to watch that, but he was over. I think he was over there and wherever he's at, someplace out there, wherever he was. We went to go get some food. I don't know. If y'all want to see it, I can pull it up. Uh, that anytime he's shopping, though, you know, you saw the other video you're shopping. It's, it's a mess. Garvey spoke at. Tomorrow is Panama City. Wednesday is going to be Cologne City. If you need the phone numbers, let me give my Central American Africans the phone numbers. That oh, they was he at Walmart? If you're trying to find out where Dr. Umar is going to be, because <laughs> I'm going to be all Central American African Aki. <laughs> We have any other Central American Africans in here, please just say Aki. <laughs> Roll call, family. Roll call, familia. Yeah, he's on keynote amongst the pigeons in the park, family. Yeah, was yeah, he was at Walmart, huh? Okay. <laughs> he went south <laughs> for the way. I told y'all, I've been telling y'all. You want me to play? Let's let's play a little bit more of this, then we'll 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 play that. I got the brother with video pulled up too. That I've been, uh, yeah, Bruce Smith. That's that's yeah, he was a beast of a uh, de 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 on defense. Boy, he was great. One of my, he was one of my favorite players too. I used to love that team. That was one of, they used to lose every year in the Super Bowl. I think they lost like three Super Bowls or something like that. <laughs> three or four of them. I don't even know. Felt so bad for them. Um, Sigmund says uh, he's he's burning through a lot of uh, money traveling all over the planet, Earth like country. Yeah, well, see, that's the thing. Um, when when Umar goes to Africa, and he said this, he's, he's actually said this in the past that, um, you know, if you can just get me a ticket, okay, yeah, but who's paying for your food, you know, and in some cases, who's paying for your your hotel motel? I'm sure that there are, uh, and there at least in the past, they would put him up in a hotel and they may give him a per diem, but understand that how Umar is, he's going to be spending money, okay, and. Over the years, the likelihood of people give him, giving him a full package as a speaker, meaning room and board, you know, a, a chauffeur, you know, like someone to drive him around, host host this type of situation, uh, per diem money, plus, uh, you know, uh, food delivered to him or brought to him or taken. That, that's not like it used to be. So what I'm getting at is that these days, Umar does, he has to come out of pocket more so than he had in the past. In order to go uh, do these these talks, since people ain't paying him like they used to, and he's not getting the types of uh, speaking engagements like he he used to either. The other thing is this: is that when he goes to Africa, the conversion rate in terms of of money, it, it he they, they, it's not the, the amount of money that he's making is negligible, especially given the opportunity costs. You traveling, you know, the the wear and tear of traveling, all that other stuff, the time that you spend traveling, where he should really, you guess what, Sigmund, he should be up there in Wilmington working on these schools. That's what he should be. But this has been going on for for four years and eleven months now. It's the same thing. There's nothing new about this whatsoever. Umar goes south as much as possible when winter comes. I told people, I told people, and I told people over and over again, hit the one. And if you guys are new here, the reason why he does that is because he doesn't have his own official residence. He stays with his mama when he can inside the closet. And literally, it's a closet, it's a side closet. It's not even a door on there. It's a sliding thing that he slides over to come out. <laughs> That's why when you see him doing these videos and he's cramped up like this, sometimes you see red curtains. Black. Listen, it ain't black men, but, but, but men, see, Umar... 
he he's basically a bastard. We're not gonna have no red curtains, the the see through lace looking stuff curtains. We don't do that. Now, if a woman want to do that, I get it. Okay, but men, we don't do that unless you live in your mama house. See, and already have the receipt where he self exposed, and he the the caseworker comes to do a wellness check on the mama, and you can hear Umar. He answers the door. You can hear him talking. You can bear to him, but I was I'm able to I was able to go into the audio, put it into uh, Pro Tools, uh, and uh, adjust the audio to where I can hear clearly what was being discussed. And Umar self exposed. He exposes himself. He lives inside his mama closet when he can. I don't think he's supposed to be there though, based on what they were talking about, because uh, he's a primary caretaker. But I don't think it's a live-in type of situation. I think that's the reason why why he was talking to the person from the uh, agency, and I know the agency name too. Uh, he was he was adamant. He he made a point to say they've extended her hours, which would make it appear as if him being there makes more sense. If they extend her, oh, that's why I'm here, basically. See now, him saying that whether it's true or not is besides the point. If it is true, that gives him more reason to be there. If it's not true, it's just a lie to to let the ca uh, caseworker know. Hey, look, I'm I'm not here. Uh, I'm not living here. I'm just here more often because they've extended her hours. Anyway, I've said too much already. Okay. Uh, the point is that when he's not uh, living in his mama closet, he stays up there at them trap banners in Wilmington. And because it gets so cold up there uh, going into uh, fall, getting in now we into winter, he can't stay up there anymore. There's no HVAC. So what does he do? He goes crazy asking people to book him. And if you guys notice, most of the uh, booking that is taking place is down south. It's it's south of Wilmington. It's south of Philadelphia. That's not by accident. He does it every single year. He wants to go to warmer climates. And that's precisely what he's doing here. That's why he's over there, South America. And, and he's supposed I think he's supposed to be going over to Akapan village or whatever that is. I don't even know. Anyway, uh, I've been telling people this for, for a long time now. And every single year it plays itself out perfectly. Thanks for Super Chat Sigmund Hightower. Yeah, he like Kung Fu. And see, he's traveling all over the place. But what about the school? And if you guys even want to take a step further here, he, I thought you said that you and he said it, that he's the primary caretaker. If you're a primary caretaker, how are you going for weeks at a time? OK, we're going to leave it at that. Sal says, man, please, he's traveling mainly to crush cookies in those countries. I bet he spends more time chasing women than doing his uh, struggle lectures. Well, a lecture is just a lecture. He'll just do he'll talk. But he got more time. The lecture, what, an hour, maybe two, maybe three. What, what do you think he's doing with the rest of the rest of his time? Well, he does what he always does. He's looking for food. He's looking for cookies. That's it. Meanwhile, up over there at them trap bandos, we're 14 years later. It's it's 14 years now. And as a matter of fact, let's do this. I think for Super Chat, let's do this. Here, let me play this. Anniversary of Umar Johnson's 2000. Today, January 6th, 2024, marks the 14-year anniversary of Umar Johnson's 2010 Facebook post where he wrote promises in 2010 to begin laying the groundwork for the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Pan-African School for Black Boys. Specializing in learning disabilities and disruptive behavior disorders, this will be a private school and yes, you will pay in order for your son to attend. Grand opening, September 11th, 2013. This is chess, not checkers. 14 years later, and there is still no school. 14 years later, and not one boy has been educated. 14 years later, and Umar Johnson continues to collect money for a school that does not exist. And he over there in the other countries, he's over on the other side of the planet, and he's still collecting money for a school that does not exist. 14 years later. Okay. And if any of you guys are wondering where the money's gone, well, part of it has to do with him, him traveling. He doesn't have his own residence. That's expensive. You just imagine how much it costs to do just travel because they're not paying the conversion rate. That's what I was going to make the point I was going to make. Conversion rate of, of, of their money to, oh, out down there in South, uh, South America or you want to go to Jamaica or you want to go over to Africa. He ain't getting paid uh, the pennies on the dollar. That's more like vacation time for him. It's just a way to get away from the cold and he can go and he can go find some more women that he can push up on. That's it. And ain't got nothing to do with nothing else. You know, and he's been doing this for years. But see, these days, it's he he it's like he's in a, a mode of desperation. That's incredible. It's, it's, it's incredible. But he does this every 
sing with y'all. Yeah, I'm gonna be in California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to go to California, Southern California, huh? You try to get to Southern California. He probably try to get down to Mexico, Tijuana. He probably want to get on Tijuana. Close lo, the closer you can get to the equator. He does it every single year. Thanks, Al, for the chat, uh, super chat. Thanks, Sigmund, for the super chat as well. Also for uh, Lewis Luck, uh, the Eric and Pupil. Lucy Goosey says, have you seen the latest Bucci Bear episode? No, I have not. Yeah, I don't watch Tariq. Uh, and he's been doing these videos. I, I know that he did a video where Umar was in it um, as a walrus. <laughs> but we're going to leave that at that. <laughs> we we going to leave that at that. Uh, thanks, uh, Lucy Goosey, for the super chat. Now, what was I going to play? I said I was going to pull some. Oh, uh, let's play a little bit more of this. Let me go pull up the video. I think I have it of Umar. Um, I think he's shopping. Let's, let me Around Panama. I'm going to be all around Panama. I'm going to be all around Panama. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and the first half of Thursday. I said I'm going to be all over Panama. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and half of Thursday. And I want to see all of my Central American Africans from Honduras to Belize to Panama. I want to see... This guy thinks that all these people from all these other places, other countries down there are going to come. He always do that, too. He'd be like, yeah, if you, if you stay, if you're in California, you, you, you need to come see me. I mean, you, it'd be people from if you in Northern California, you need to come to Los Angeles. I mean, he, he really thinks like that. And now he thinks that people from different countries down in South America. And he's what did he say? Where did he say he's at? Uh, the Panama. OK. So anywhere down there, if you're down there somewhere, you go, you need to come and, and see Umar. And he thinks like that. He thinks he's that he's big pop and everybody going to come see him. <laughs> he, he crazy. <laughs> then people down there, down there, they're like, okay, okay, what, what do you say? Uh, the Shaka Khan of Batala Shake School of Fan Beats. <laughs> now, you know, Jonathan, you know they're going to be teaching them kids how to make Obatala Shakes family. I haven't seen him go up there. Well, I, I took a break, so I don't know. But I haven't seen him up at the drop squad. I wonder if they're still open. Because he, he used to go up there all the time. He, he probably done got on their nerve, Jonathan, to where they don't even like him up there. He come in all loud. Y'all remember that? Hit the one. He's come in all loud, yelling, people trying to eat their food. Then he got to make it a big show. They did have a young lady there, though. She was really bright, really intelligent. She did really good. She did so good. Uh, thanks for Super Chat, Jonathan. Okay, uh, let me play a little more of this, and then we're going to pull out the video of him shopping down there. All of you. I want to see all of you. The phone number in Panama to find out where yep. I'm going to be. The yep, phone that. number in Panama to find out where I'm going to be is plus 507. Six Why is he giving up? Nah, let me let me skip to that. I don't want him to give the phone number out. This guy. Of Panama this week. That is plus 507. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be good yeah Desmond you right I ain't gonna put that on screen but you ain't lying here we go four plus 507 6879 6574 plus 507 no, 6879 uh, uh, hold on a second. Someone said, some of that actually uh, do, do I think uh, oh it was are you sure I hope not I really hope not Any, can anyone verify this X Freeman says I think the drop squad was closed are you sure about that? I hope that's not true. Is that you? Somebody just came in. Well, anyway, I've said, we got so many kids. Ain't no telling. Seven four, or you can message me on WhatsApp, or you can message me with direct text or WhatsApp. My cell number is plus one two one five. Okay, okay, he's just giving his uh his nine eight nine nine eight five eight <laughs> plus one two one five. Nine eight nine nine eight five eight plus one two one five nine eight nine nine eight five eight. I love oh, Jamaica. People say that it was closed. Dang. Yeah, they they that yeah that was a couple of months ago though. I I don't know. I, I don't now. I want to go look it up. Anyway. As all I mean, not that I would ever be out there, but I mean, I I, I would go and eat. I mean, you know. Well, I don't know about all that. I mean, let me quit playing. <laughs> said Lennon lying. He lying. <laughs> Y'all like Lennon lying. He over here lying about you gonna go to draw scrub and go get some. You you right. Okay, I, I that's why I stopped myself. I apologize. <laughs> I actually Miss Panther the cat just thought of yeah, I, I did too. I do too. I missed that guy. I'm a matter of fact, I, I just saw the picture 
on my phone because my phone be tripping my phone it, it's so broke down and old i need to get a new one my wife always telling me to but i'm i'm so i'm just i got an it degree and i got an old broke down phone it might be might as well be a a, a flip phone uh, thanks for the cash app too uh from uh brother jay okay you know who you are i appreciate it uh my cash app and paypal is down b- below uh, but I, I was uh, I don't know. I, I was having problems getting in, into my photos or whatever. And then I, I happened to see a picture, old picture of Panther. My, my, my keyboard is, needs to be clean. It's looking dirty. That's me watching the later game the other day. Uh, let me let me see if I could find this because I, I do. I miss that guy so much. But he stopped coming around at a certain point he would just leave he would be gone first it was like a couple of days then it'd be for like a week and then he wouldn't show up for like a month and then two months and, and then at, at a certain point it was three months he'll come back you know then he just would just not he, he would just not show up and then uh he just stopped coming back he, and I, I told the kids because cats are like that they're, they're not uh, loyal uh you know if, if they, they don't have they're not if, if someone feeds them better or they're more comfortable someplace else or they got a girlfriend with the boys i think he got a he probably got a, a girlfriend probably has some some babies and uh he was like you know what <laughs> i ain't got to deal with y'all <laughs> he was gone but i missed that guy i wish i could find the picture because i was looking at him the other day uh i happened to see him and his eyes were glowing because i took the picture and the flash made his eye and he's just laying on the bed it's not coming up Oh, here, here is a picture of him right here, but this ain't the one I was talking about. Let me see if y'all can see this. There you go. He was the homie. I mean, he was just the, he was, he was the homie. Yeah, that's Panthro. Yeah, I miss, I miss all our animals. I really do. Well, I miss them, but I, I mean, if, if I had a choice, I'd be, that's okay. Cause I was always the one that had to clean up after all of them every single time. Uh, okay, yeah. I, uh, so Drop Squad is 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 def, definitely in trouble. Gave too much freedom. <laughs> oh my god! Don't do that. I'm going I'm gonna go see if I can see if they still open. I feel bad. I know it probably doesn't matter to some of y'all, but I, I the memories, you know, just the memories. Rod said we will have some Luther Van, Van Gloss for the sisters and Teddy Pender candles for, for my African Bohemian brothers and sisters. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, he got to do what he got to do. And that's one thing we can say about Umar is he uh, he's he's an in, a, in, international cookie crusher. And and this is and I don't mean to go here, but this is another reason why uh, uh, when people uh, hey baby, um, that's one of the reasons why I, I take issue where people from other countries they have an issue with me uh, covering Umar. Uh, see, uh, hi baby, uh, he's not over in your country all you know most of the t- most of the year doing what he's doing over here especially to the women see so that's one of the issues that i have with, with people uh who take you know they, they criticize me for doing umar videos uh, and they're from other countries well if if he was over there uh doing what he's done over here and i'm not just talking about school scamming i'm talking about everything including preying on these these black women and single black mothers in particular um if he was doing that over there you guys would i would hope that you would have a problem with that see so it's it's easy uh, to criticize from from all the way across the other side of the world, he's not doing what he's doing over here, up over there, not to the same de- de- degree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hey baby. Oh, someone and, and thanks, Rod M, for the super chat. I appreciate it. Uh, someone said uh, that it closed December eighth. Yeah, well, that's sad. I, I, I hate to hear that. It was black uh, business, and and I uh, I don't I don't, don't want to hear that. I mean, I, it, it's the reality, but I, I really it it, it makes me kind of sad, you know. Uh, and I, I remember abundance when in my conspiracy, a lot of people don't uh, know this, but in my conspiracy theory days, I think she interviewed me one time. Uh, this was probably about it was over a decade ago. I think she interviewed me. Uh, she may not even remember that. Uh, so even when, when she, he would go up there, I, I would I would just think, oh, women, you know, this is someone that that I actually did. She interviewed me. And um, uh, it's sad to hear that. It really is. It's sad to hear that, that it closed. Uh, and and again, he hadn't been up there, so they may have been struggling for for a while. Uh, uh yeah, uh, Panther, that that was the cat. It was the the male cat, and then Kitty. She it was Kitty's mom. We had Kitty. Uh, no one really liked her. She only liked me. She'd hang out with me, and then she would hang out with my older son sometimes. But other than that, she liked to be left alone. My wife didn't like her at all. She she even these days when people bring her up, she's like <laughs> she didn't like her. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I said, leave that cat alone. No, she's mean. She's mean. So we had we had uh, Panthro, uh, and then we had uh, her, and then there was at one point we had I think seven kittens all together. It was it was a mess. And then we had um, Carmelo. Pete, rest in peace. He passed. I miss him a lot too. Uh, anytime I see smaller dogs, it remind I think about him. Uh, me and him, we was we was real close. And we had turtles too, uh, by the way. Anyway, we don't have any any animals these days. Uh, thanks, uh, Amira, uh, uh, for tuning on in as well. Okay, <laughs> exactly. Okay, Black Dot says I just looked it up. It says permanently closed. Okay, so it is closed. I, I, I do not want to hear that. It's sad, but it is what it is. Okay, I wish them best best of luck uh, moving forward. Okay, let me give a couple of shout outs. Thanks, Black Dot, for the super chat as well. Uh, Still Rain, thank you so much for being here. Shout out to Ferronic Corp. Uh, also, Mixtrix Monica's in the building. The hair looking cool. I wish I had hair like that because I would do it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I have it braided and slide to the side. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to tell me nothing, family. I might even grow it out and get the dreads. That's, you know, my wife, she's from the islands. That's all we wanted dreads. You know what I'm saying? Cause I know she would like, she would love, she would love that. <laughs> <laughs> Said, jump on my back, grab my jazz dress, and ride me like a horse. I just ride me like a horse, baby. Where you want to go? I take it to McDonald's. <laughs> See, we go down the street with the, anyway, I'm tripping. All right. Uh, I think we're all caught up with the super chats. Let's get back to the video. Here we go. Always. My Jamaican queens. Where are my Jamaican African queens at? How do I look at my Jamaican? Yeah, yeah. She, she told, I used to say that because I've heard uh, people, Jamaican said, my wife said, stop saying that. I said, why not? Then she explained to me what it was. I didn't know because she knows Patois and all that stuff. When she talking, I, I, don't, I don't know nothing that she's saying. Well, no, I shouldn't say. I can't. Most of, I would say 90% of what she says, I can't even understand it. But she's talking and she just be going on. But she don't, she don't like talking it. Uh, I'll be tight because for me, when she used to talk, it is activate my sack. I don't know why. Just that pat while she's in, and, and I just be, I don't know why, family. <laughs> I just get, I just get hot. <laughs> so sometimes I say, Can you just say a couple words <laughs> for me? She was like, No, <laughs> she won't do it. I kid you not. I can, she will not do it. That's the two things. She won't talk no pat while she won't give me a massage, family. She won't give me no massage. When I met her, she was in massage school. She but she would not give me massages to this day. You know, sad, sad. It's just sad. Now, if, if she want me to talk some ebonics, I'll talk some ebonics. She want me to give her a massage. I'm definitely going to give her a massage, family. OK, all professional. <laughs> <laughs> She'll tell you, too. I'm known for the professional massage family. You know, I'm professional. I'm I'm professional. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but she told me what that was. I didn't, I didn't even know what it was. I was saying it. Okay. Lewis X says he can get more money if he takes the Michael Jackson in person. <laughs> you talk about Miguel Hoxon? Miguel Hoxon? Miguel Hoxon would have been a big hit down in Panama because he go down there and talk that Spanish. Cause, Cause, Miguel Hoxon, y'all know that he, he he's Latino. He might be Mexican. I thought about that too. I said, you mean to tell me, Umar, with all this blacky black talk, that the Michael Jackson impersonator that you get, it don't matter to me, cause 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 Miguel Hoxon, he gets it in. Okay, Just don't don't get it twisted. Y'all know dog on well when he was up at that block party doing his thing. All everyone who could cause, cause, listen, people in the cookie crush chat, they was screaming and hollering and going on caring. They were so happy. He could have took him down there with him. But my criticism is this. Umar, you talk all this blackity black talk and you talk about how we need to, you know, uh, keep the money in the, in the hood or keep it, a, let it circulate amongst black people. Why don't you get a, a, a black guy to do the impersonation? Because, you know, there's a gang of them out there, too. No. And again, it don't make me no difference because Miguel did a fantastic job. He did a fantastic job. I said he did a fantastic job. OK, and if you all missed it here, here you go. It was it. January 6th. We had, yes, donate to the school, dollar sign FD09. $50. We're not sick. Okay? He told you what. Thank you. Yeah. Here you go, right here. Nah, I got this. I got this. I Miguel is coming. FDMG 
is coming empty mg it's coming it's coming yeah you can bear call <laughs> it's coming there you go there you go it's coming there you go he was getting it it's in coming. look at umar he was so happy it's coming <laughs> that young man was looking all like what should i be get i'll be was looking scared see what the great Gray shirt on. Look how he looked when, when Miguel showed up. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, oh, no. <laughs> Watch him one more time. Watch this. <laughs> he probably thought it was really Michael. He thought it was real Michael Jackson. All right. Yeah, I think that's brother Jose over there, too, over there in the corner. Anyway, I can go on and on, on but We can just pull that up and have a field day. Just the, the videos from the block for <laughs> You, you all know what? In about a month, it'll be the, the five-year anniversary of the Umar acquiring these trap bandos. I might, I might, we might have to do a marathon. <laughs> we just get it all in, get crazy into it. All right. So there you go, Lewis Luck. So Lewis Luck said he can get more money if he takes Miguel Hoxon impersonator on tour with him. He can dance silently while Umar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who are we running off the mouth yelling? And <laughs> Michael Jackson, Miguel in the back. <laughs> He was doing interpretive dance. That's that stuff weird. <laughs> okay, thanks, Louis Luck, for the super chat. I appreciate it. Okay, let, let's get back to it because see, we done we already at 51 minutes and we ain't got no work done. We got 950 people in the building. Thank y'all so much for tuning on. If y'all hit the like button, I'd appreciate it. <clears throat> Excuse me, I gotta clear my throat. Jamaican African Queens at my Jamaican African Queens, where y'all at? My Jamaican African queens in the United Kingdom, my Jamaican African queens in the United States, my Jamaican African queens on the island of Jamaica. Do I look good in my Jamaican colors? Do I look good in my, I'm talking to the queens right now. Beta males behave. Do I look good in the, in, in the Jamaican flag right now? The most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. The most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. The most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. But this is what I wanted to ask my Miami Africans. This is what I wanted to ask my Miami Africans. Here we go. I need a recommendation for a black restaurant. Here we go. If you have the recommendation for a good black restaurant in Miami, I'm hungry. I haven't eaten all day. I'm hungry. I haven't eaten all day. I'm hungry. I haven't eaten all day. So do you have some American African soul food <laughs> restaurant recommendations? Do you have some continental African restaurant <laughs> soul food recommendations? I'll I'm take hungry. some Cuban said, African I'm food. Hungry. I'll take some Puerto Rican African food. I'll take some Dominican Republic African food. I'll take some Ethiopian, but I need to eat family. The Prince of Pan-Africanism needs to eat. The Prince of Pan-Africanism needs to eat. I'm in Miami and I'm hungry. Yeah, if I, you know, have I know it. Uh, he he always talking about so he living in Mama Closet. So this is he's in Miami right here. He's I think he is that is that what he's saying? He's in Miami. I thought he said he was in, down in uh, South America. I'm tripping. Maybe I messed that up. Did anybody know? I have a restaurant recommendation for the most requested black scholar in the world. If you have a restaurant recommendation for the most relevant black scholar in the world, if you have a restaurant recommendation for the most revolutionary black scholar in the world please text my phone he's in miami please text he my was, phone two one five nine eight nine my bad y'all i thought he was uh, already down in in south america i'm tripping i don't know what i'm talking about i'm just my bad nine eight five eight two one five nine eight nine nine eight five eight let me see if anybody texts my phone two one five nine eight nine nine eight five eight let me see if anybody oh, yeah. texts my stop. phone. Oh, yeah, but Do why would they go to Miami to get there? Wouldn't they go? Well, I don't know. I would have a look at the thing. I, I would assume that he would have to go f if he's going. No, no, that makes no. I don't. I don't know. That don't make no sense to me. Why would you? Why wouldn't you just catch a flight? Let's. Well, oh no, but he's he's in Philadelphia, standing in Mama Closet. So I guess that I guess that makes sense. Rounds. Get off the live and call me. <laughs> Queen, we're going to do your interview. We're going to do your interview, but we're not going to do it until I'm back in the United States. Oh, Umar got called out. See? 
Yeah, they probably paid you too. I'm resting in Miami, fresh from Jamaica. Tomorrow I head to the Republic of Panama. What? So he goes, f he already went to, why would you, what kind of scheduling is this? This don't make no sense. That's why I'm confused. Hold on a second. Not going to do it until I'm back in the United States. I'm resting in Miami, fresh from. So he's resting in Miami, fresh from. from Jamaica. Jamaica. So he goes to, he flies. Now that makes sense. That's why I'm wondering what's going on. He flies from, uh, from uh, Jamaica to, to Florida, the, Miami. That's where he's at right now. And then he's going to go from. Tomorrow I head to the Republic of Panama. And then he's going to fly to the Republic of Panama. What kind of sense does that make? Listen, I'm not all into geography like that, but it just makes no. But see, it don't matter, you know, because he ain't paying for it. He ain't paying for it. How are you going to be the most requested and you don't even have a travel agent to get your schedule right? It's just wasting money. He don't care. He don't even care. That's like rhyming in the bus schedule he was talking about. In Central America, you will hear from me afterwards. Does anybody have a restaurant recommendation? Ladies, stop sending me inappropriate pictures. Stay away from Trick Daddy. He can't cook. Trick Daddy got a Miami restaurant. Where Trick Daddy restaurant at? What in the world? Where Trick that Trick Daddy got? What he got? He got some ribs. I'll pull up the Trick Daddy spot. What is <laughs> Trick Daddy got a restaurant in Miami? What is he talking about? Does Trick, Trick Daddy, Daddy have a restaurant in Miami? I don't have a problem supporting my black brother. What I don't have a problem supporting my black brother. Somebody text me the address. <laughs> yeah, the bus. Somebody stay like away from Trick Daddy. Daddy. He can't cook. Leave Trick yeah, Daddy yeah, alone, yeah. brothers uh, and sisters. Food, cook, uh, food, sex, and money. That's it. Let people on the live. Y'all want to go live with the prince? I'm hungry right now. Did you get my magnet while you flirting on the phone? Who else texted me? 215. I thought you were supposed to open up a school for black boys. Big Papa. You see how ridiculous this is, all this is? And you really shouldn't be reading these comments out because I'm sure you be getting all kind of crazy stuff with as as uh, freak offish as you happen to be. And I'm no aunt, listen, no disrespect, but there are women, I already know that they be sending you that stuff and then you be looking and you be watching as you be sitting up there by yourself in a hotel motel room by yourself. We all know what time it is. But you should not be discussing this, Umar. You should not. You should be doing be living like that anyway with the bumpy bump, but you shouldn't be talk, you know, sharing this this information. Does it make sense? Hit the one. He shouldn't be doing it, but he don't care. Nine eight nine nine eight five eight. Who want to go live? First of all, let me say this. I understand that. Z yeah, yeah. Of course, he's trying to eat for free. They they send him a picture of turkey legs. <laughs> oh my god! Don't, don't stop. Please don't do this. Don't do this, Bob. Please. Okay, <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> Maybe send them pictures of their ankles. <laughs> let me stop. Let me stop. Y'all, <laughs> y'all, bad influence. Let me let me cut it out. Uh, someone said if he probably they probably didn't pay for his food. Yeah, well, it's a, it's, it looks like it's a layover type of situation, but that he should have had his schedule. This is just bad scheduling you know, all the way around. I told y'all this is only. <laughs> I told y'all this is only fans who are belly and all. <laughs> I remember Lewis like he did say he was going. Oh, he was going to have. He was going to actually set up a only fans. I said, Umar, don't do that. Don't even say that. <laughs> Uh, let, let me stop. We're going to keep going. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat, Lewis. Like, oh, so the cook says he doesn't behave like an educated. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Not, not at all. Not at all. Uh, he's he he's almost 50. He'll be 50 in October this year. And. Uh, he's. Uh, emotionally, he's he's probably about eight years old. 
uh, he's probably about eight years old, maybe seven. Uh, his behavior is unbecoming of someone who is almost 50 years old and claims to be the most requested black scholar in the world. He's almost 50 talking about he wants two wives. What, what do you mean you want two wives? If you got all these women out here get willing to send you the naked uh, pics and, and, uh, uh, and, and uh, let them crush your cookies, you mean to tell me you couldn't find one that you could have married by now? You got baby mamas, though, but you couldn't find one. I, I don't get that. I, I never understood that. And he's almost 50 now. Uh, listen, I, me and my wife, we've been together since, I don't know, 2000, 2001, something like that. It's, it's been 20, 23 years, 22, 23 years. I don't even want to think like this, but if, if I was single, it, 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 if I never met my wife, it wouldn't take me no 50 years. No, that, that, that's no. But see, the thing is that uh, marriage, it's a commitment and it's a long term commitment. And there's going to be plenty of challenges. And sometimes you can work those challenges out. Sometimes you can't. But see, Umar's not interested in committed. What is he committed to? Here we go. He's not committed to black women. He may say stuff that makes it seem like he cares about y'all, but he don't care about y'all. He's not committed to black women. He's not committed to black men. He's not committed to black people either. If he was committed to black uh, people, he wouldn't have tricked off all this millions of dollars at this point. If he was committed to black children, he would have educated one. One. The school would have been opened a decade ago if he was if he was committed. See, that's the thing. Umar, what he's committed to is living a sexually promiscuous lifestyle. That's what he's committed to. It's, it's own carnal, if you want to call it that, carnal desires. That's what he's committed to. See, And it's all wrapped up. It's all the same. He's committed to food. He's committed to sex and he's committed to money. But see, the money is what allows him to get you know, be able to move here and there to to exploit uh, people in these different types of ways. The food is just he's gluttonous. He's greedy. And, but you see, he's greedy with money, too. That's why when people sent him to I think he said two hundred fifty thousand dollars in a couple of months, whatever it was, he was talking mess to you donors. What are you talking about? He's so greedy. And see, it's also an act of greed to just be out here living a sexually promiscuous lifestyle. See, I'll say it. One vagina should be enough. That should be enough for any rational thinking man who has himself uh, together and is not emotionally uh, retarded. I'm saying emotionally. That should be enough. For a man who has uh, some level of respect for women, you, you wouldn't be out there living like that. But see, Umar... At almost at the age of 50, he's not committed to anything but fulfilling his own sexual desires, his greed and his need for money and all those three things. I remember I did a video a long time ago to talk about that, how all of that is wrapped up in this in, in one. Okay, It's all wrapped up into one. And he flows between those three things so easily. He'll first he'll start talking about uh, how he needs money. And then he starts talking about the, how he, the cookies, you know. And it's, it's it just it goes one after the other. There's other things too, the gambling stuff and the turning of the heat down. But but his primary motivating uh, force is to, uh, the sexual exploitation of, w of women to to uh, crush them cookies. Then money allows him to go here and there to find uh, new uh, women to exploit, and then food. I've heard him talk about uh, cookies. Then he, well, cookies, that's the food. But then he starts naming off pina colada. OK, that's we're talking food. Then he starts. He says warm peanut butter. That's food. Then he says uh, green pistachio. That's food. You know, one time he said purple orangutan. I said, if you don't know. <laughs> I said, who more really? I'm just playing on that one. I'm making that one up. But I, he'd be out there with what he would say. He'd say some of the most weirdest stuff. But it's all it's all wrapped up together. Food, uh, uh, sex, uh, and money. And that's who won. And, and, and I would propose, uh, to get back to your point, whole Southern Cooks, that's one of the reasons why at the age of 50, he hasn't established a loving relationship with a woman. 
because what woman would want to be with a man like that? They, they might send you some some uh, the, the, some of these women might send him uh, naked pictures or, or whatever. OK, but that's that's the that's the quality of the woman that, that uh, I guess Umar, they, they find whatever. I don't even understand it, but that's whatever. I'm not here to judge. But a good woman ain't, ain't dealing with that. They're not dealing with Umar. Unless he took the time to get his life together, turn his life around so that he could function as a man in, in society and so that he would be worthy of being with a black woman in the first place or being with any woman for them. It don't make me no difference. Anyway, he, he almost, he'll be 50 in, 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 uh, in uh, what is it, October, right? Is it October or August? August 21st, October. I think it's August. I think for Super Chat, a lady says 95% uh, of black YouTube are old pimps and hoes. <laughs> is it 95%? I don't know if it's 95%. <laughs> a lady, I don't think it's 95, okay? 90? <laughs> Maybe not. This one, I'll just play it. <laughs> Dang, that's, that's, that's pretty hardcore right there, I must say. <laughs> okay. She said 95%. <laughs> Thank you, lady, for the super chat. Black Will says, how's it going? Says, damn, Lennon been hanging uh, for some years uh, now, brother. Been following you since the first Umar vid. My God, keep uh, the exposing uh, exposing going. You are making a serious change. Thank you so much, Black Will. I know it's, it's been a while. Uh, it, it has um, it, it had, it has made a difference. The thing I'm noticing these days, uh, and I saw someone make this comment um, recently they said have you noticed that more and more people are are speaking out about umar uh and it's true right now but part of it is that he's been running his mouth and talking so reckless on so many different uh topics you know he, he's gone at vanessa uh, I, I, let me say this too i apologize the other the last week i said something like vanessa williams instead of saying uh, vanessa bryant I'm, i need to make issue a public apology uh to uh vanessa uh i don't know if she don't watch this but just out of respect okay she's a widow um and uh, I want to apologize for that. But, you know, that's just me sometimes. I, I'm getting old. Um, but anyway, he's gone at her. There's a lot of people that came out in defense of, of uh, including Jalen Rose, came out in defense of her and Kobe. Umar, he's been talking reckless. So he's been trending and he's he's gone viral with the the Joe Button. He's talking about Eminem can't be considered to be the greatest of all time because simply because he's white, even though that wasn't even the conversation. The conversation was, uh, 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 is he one of the greatest? But Umar flipped it and says, why are you, you can't say that he is the greatest. No, they said one, not the greatest. So everyone who's back in Umar, you guys, it's, it's, a, it's a false pretense. It's a fallacy in the first place. Uh, anyway, that's besides the point. He's been talking reckless with that. He also said, um, uh, he said something about Rolling Martin that's recovering today. Uh, that has, uh, you know, more and more people are, are speaking about it. There's something else too. I can't remember what he, he did on, on the Joe Budden uh, podcast that people were talking about. It was, it was a Vanessa uh, Bryant. It was the, um, oh, uh, yeah, it was the Eminem thing. And it was something else that I can't remember right now. And, and that actually was the biggest thing. I can't think of it. Y'all let me know. Like, click, click, but anyway, what has happened is that more and more people are uh, criticizing Umar right now because he's been running his mouth being reckless. But then that also translates to more people coming over here uh, and watching these videos. I mean, we're at, almost at a thousand right now. Um, and uh, I just posted this video a couple of hours ago to be on live stream. Not a couple hours, maybe uh, five, five or six hours ago. Uh, but the point is that right now, um, a lot of people are speaking out about Umar. And I'm gonna tell you something, Black Wolf. Umar, he actually enjoys it. He he plays the victim. He doesn't like you know being criticized and stuff, but he likes the attention. Okay, so we we talked about those three things with Umar, but the other thing is just the attention attention seeking. He can't be off the internet. He just he can't because what what Black Wolf? If Umar didn't have the internet, what would he have? What would he do? He doesn't have a job. He doesn't have any friends. He even admitted that. He said, I don't have friends. I have my mama. He's a mama's boy. There ain't nothing wrong with that. But if you're 50 talking about you want uh, two queens, you want two wives, uh, that, that don't compute. Okay? It, it's not computing in my mind. All right? You want to call everybody else beta males, but I'm not even into all those terminology. But if you alpha, I would think that you would be committed to a woman and that you raise in a family and that you love women and, and you're respectful towards them. And you're not up here talking about how you won't super soak. They, you know, you wouldn't be doing that, Umar. But that's besides the point. Uh, the, the point is that more and more people are speaking out about Umar. And that's great. It's great. I encourage it. Thank you so much, uh, Black Wolf. I appreciate it. OK, let's get back to it. Uh, so let, let me play a little bit more of this. Then we're going we're gonna to play the video where Umar is out there shopping. Here we go. S.D. Roland DeMartin. 
I understand that Zesty Rolanda Martin, I understand Zesty Rolanda Martin, who I got kicked off. I don't even know who that is. Rolanda Martin, anybody know what he's talking about? Uh, two wives and no home to put them. I know. The news know one now for hating. His views dropped and he got dropped. When Zesty Rolanda Martin had me on News One Now with his panel of coons, after that showing, the Dr. Umar E. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Thank, thanks, Mo. I forgot about that. That's the one he went viral for, the, the main one, at least the start, because that was the first clip that was released from the Joe Button. Thank you, thank you for that. I appreciate it. So that's another reason why Umar's trending, because he's been talking so reckless, talking about, because he was going at Ish, about Ish being in a, a relationship with a, a, he said a white woman, but really, if the, if the woman is she, if she from over in Portugal, that's not white. See, white only becomes white once you get into this country. Now, if she was raised up over here, okay. All right. Th these are all social constructs anyway. But Umar, you know how he does. Here's the thing, though. Umar's not committed to a black woman. Ish isn't committed to a black woman, if you want to put it in these terms, based on how Umar, it don't make me no difference. Okay. Now, I'm saying the hypocrisy is what we need to look at. Umar, you're almost 50 years old and you're out there chasing women all around the world. You sex offenders lifestyle and you got the bumpity bump. And you're not committed. See, you're you're a predator. You prey on black women, and yet you got the nerve to tell another man what how he should be living his life, how he should. No, it don't make no sense. You don't even take care of your kids, but you want to give advice on parenting. You want to give advice on tell people what they need to do with their kids. I don't think so. See, slavery is over with. Okay, there are black people who who literally died in order for us to have certain rights, including the right to marry whoever we want to, or to be in a relationship with whoever you want to. Okay. And the way I look at it, if, if any of my kids, listen, as long as the person, I don't even care. If, if it's a, a LGBT situation, I don't care. It is just, they better not be no dummy. It better not be no dummy. Nobody that treats you wrong. They better have some respect for you. If it's a, a white person, I don't, I don't care. If it's a, a, a Asian, if it's a, you just, whatever you want to throw out there, somebody from the Caribbean, I don't care. If it's someone from South America somewhere, I don't care. If it's someone from Pluto, I don't care. I'm not here to dictate how you should live your life. I'm here to guide you so that you can have the best life experience as possible. You know, if the grand if the grandbabies uh, come out and, and they, uh, you think I'm going to treat them any differently? <sighs> See, no, I ain't, I ain't playing that game. My grand, my my children are my children. I'm a love them no matter what. And my grandbabies, if, if God willing, if, if my kids have kids, uh, and if my kids kids have kids, and I'm I'm here to own Earth when they do. Uh, I'm going to be so thankful and grateful. I don't care what their skin color is. It ain't going to make me no difference. See, But see, Umar can't think like that uh, because he's not a family man. And he doesn't know what goes into developing a loving relationship with a woman, regardless of what, quote unquote, race that woman is. It, don't, it, it really, it, it's inconsequential. He doesn't even understand the concept of committing to a woman, let alone a black woman. So he should not talk. Anyway. Uh, that's why he's going viral. And that's why a lot of people are talking about him right now. And even though he wants to play the victim, he enjoys it because he likes the attention. All right. Let me play a little more of this. Here we go. Port based Germaniac Nation, the Ifa Tunde acts. OK, by the way, Germaniac Nation, these are all the women that uh, Umar is. Uh, he considers to be part of his uh, groupie network, if you will. Because he does look at it that way, uh, that, that he got different women in different states and different women in different countries. So when he says Germaniacs, that's what he's referring to. Boycotted Roland Martin show on News One Now. They his views dropped yeah. and they dropped him. Zesty Rolanda, Zesty Rolanda. Here you go. Fell off after he tried to come for the Prince of Pan. Now, when he says zesty, he's, he's this is a, trying to refer to uh, uh, someone as being gay or homosexual. Okay, it's implied. Okay, he's talked that talk about a lot of people. He said that about Tariq Nasheed. He said he said that about me when he and he said he works when he was talking on on uh, uh, who, what, what was that? That was on the I was going to say the Roland Martin interview. No, that wasn't Roland Martin interview. That was on Lord Lord Jamar interview. That was a Lord Jamar interview. But Umar, he has a habit of doing that, too. He'll, he'll question a person's sexuality when he feels as if they're talking about him or in, in a negative way or criticizing him. And he does it over and over and over His again. views dropped and news what now dropped that receding hairline, no neck Negro. I'm a. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Umar, you mean. <laughs> I used to love animaniacs. 
Animaniacs. Y'all remember that? Yeah, he called him obsessed. Umar is nuts. Okay, he's just he's be out there anyway. Deal with Rolanda when I get back to the states after Panama. I'm gonna deal with Zesty Rolanda. Roland did look suspect dropping it like it was hot in that pink outfit. <laughs> what pink outfit are you talking about? I, let's keep going. <laughs> let's keep going. Uh, did you smash the like button? We got 976 people watching, 354. That's not bad. Uh, let's get to 500. Like, yeah, let's try to see if we get to 500 by the end of, end of the month. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm going to deal with that Democratic <laughs> Party plantation <laughs> slave driver when I get back from Panama. But Y'all in here, y'all don't do that to Roland. Don't do not do him like that. Come on now. <laughs> he has a wife from what I know. Don't do that. <laughs> he caught him. It, it don't matter if he ain't got no neck. So what? Okay. He Is it wrong? It's not wrong to have no neck. Come on now. Stop it. Don't do that, y'all. Y'all y'all act like it, it, it's the end of the earth if a man ain't got no neck. Stop it. Come on. He it, it, he has a right to have no neck. <laughs> okay? Y'all need to stop it. Don't do that. <laughs> you guys. You guys. <laughs> let, 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 so what? I mean, if he got hit, that's okay. Ain't nothing wrong with that if he got hit just a head and a shoulder. Anyway. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I don't know. So what? If he does, so what? With scammers, <laughs> Roland Mars not a scammer. Come on, don't do that. Is he? I don't think he is. I don't follow. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I remember one time he was dancing for what's her name. I said, "Oh no!" <laughs> he, he's like, "Get that boy your balls." He start dancing. I said, <laughs> <laughs> he was dancing for uh who was that anyway? It was uh Hillary, I think it was Hillary Clinton. Y'all remember that? I said, don't do that. <laughs> y'all don't 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 y'all don't do that to, to, to don't do that. Yeah, it was Hillary Clinton. And that's why I said, nah, bro. <laughs> that was not a good <laughs> So what if he got a punk neck? <laughs> I'm not laughing. I ain't laughing at it. I'm not laughing at that. Okay. I'm not. I'm just <clears throat> I'm trying to clear my throat. My throat. Let, let's let's get to <laughs> let's get back on here. <laughs> let's get back to it. Okay. Y'all the clowning, but it's not about that. We talk about Ubar lie. He be lying. Okay. All right, here we go. I'm not gonna deal with Zesty Rolanda right now. I'm not gonna deal with <laughs> Zesty Rolanda right now. I'm gonna deal with Zesty Rolanda. <laughs> <laughs> you got know, robbed him first with Michael Max time, uh, but a bit of Michael Max movie. That's what, okay. A little bit later, I'm gonna deal with Zesty Rolanda a little bit later. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now I see Vlad put up another clip with Math Hoffa oh. with my name in the clip. Here we go. I don't think that he. I don't think that was uh, respectful of him to try to use that brother. To try to now he uh, don't have a uh, have no neck though. This is one. <laughs> How do you know he ain't got no neck, Sharita? Come on, y'all, don't do that. Let me go. I don't mean to be petty, but let me. I'm not gonna put nothing on the screen either. Hold on one second. <laughs> Why y'all doing this? I shouldn't even entertain this. Okay, everybody has a neck. Okay. <laughs> oh my God! I'm scared in the world. You guys don't do that. I'm looking right now. He he. Where's his neck? I'm trying to see it. He he has a neck. He does. I see one right here. He does. He he has one. You guys don't do that. Okay. You guys. <laughs> I'm trying to see right there. Then. Oh my God! What is this? I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna do that. 
I'm not gonna put this up. We, we. <laughs> no, no, come on. All right, everybody. No, no, everyone has one. I have a long neck. Matter of fact, let's see. Let's see. I got that long neck. The ladies love that. They love that neck, family. <laughs> oh, that's the story the other day. My lady girl. You know, your neck is really, it's you, your neck is, is so beautiful. I said, ma'am, excuse me, ma'am. It is. I mean, can I touch it? <laughs> I said, no, ma'am. Umar wouldn't like that. Please, I can't do that. She, well, Umar, you know, don't worry about Umar. He called me, he said, he called me gorgeous. <laughs> I said, she took out her hand. She had the big old hands. Let me stop. All right. Uh, I, I don't want to be clowning uh, 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 Roland Martin. I just see this picture when he was younger. Y'all, I don't want to pull it up. I ain't going to do that. Uh, he's uh, he's going on a new mission to have the 1967 Loving versus Virginia decision overturned once to make interracial couples, couples against the law. Listen, Umar is always talking something. And it'd be the, some of the most, he'll say, I'm going to do this and I'm going, he ain't going to do a doggone thing. Listen, all this talk of interracial dating and, and bunny hopping, all this stuff, ooh, that's just rhetoric that Umar uh, uses. A lot of that, if you go, guys go back to early Umar, he wasn't talking like that. But see, there's been some things that have happened within his family, in particular with his dad, that, you know, it, it, he, that's when he started to talk about interracial relationships and bunny hopping. I have this video. Ninety five percent of y'all. No, ninety nine percent of y'all have not seen this video. But I have it in my archive. Where Umar was mad at his daddy because his daddy went to go see Umar Johnson, went to go see his grandchildren, went to go see Umar Johnson's one of Umar Johnson's daughters. And he was mad because Umar was mad at him because he felt like he was going against Umar. Hit the one. 99% of you have not seen that, but I haven't. So when he says, you know, uh, we need to be taking care of our children and we need this, all this kind of stuff, we need to, you know, we shouldn't be uh, dating outside the race. But listen, Umar, you don't even take care of your own kids. You got to at least two, it's more than, than two. Okay. Just to, uh, let me just say that. Okay. You got at least two baby mamas. You've been on child school for 20 years and you got mad at your own daddy for going to go visit your child your daddy's grandchild because you felt like he was going against you. Yeah. And he was, and Umar was so mad. He sure was. Very few people have seen that. Okay. It'd be it, it, uh, out of a hundred people, probably uh, one or two of y'all may have seen it, but he, he was so mad. Yeah, what kind of man? Some of, oh, some of y'all, it's more than, it's more than, yeah, okay. So maybe let's say 85% they haven't seen it. Uh, I want to just show this picture. Well, let, let me not do that. It, it's on IM, IMDB. If y'all want to go look up, Roland, but I don't want to do that because then y'all going to start clowning me. I don't want to just show the turn of that. Again, Roland Martin has never been my cup of tea. He, he never has. I don't watch that. I'm not, not into the politics, politics. And when I saw him uh, dancing for, uh, I was going to say dance for Whitney Houston. When he was up there dancing for uh, uh, Miss Clinton, I said, nope. Anyway, uh, let's get back to it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> All right, let's, let's get back to it. Here we go. Uh, attack me, but I see he put my name in another Mav Hoffa clip. I'm going to check out the clip and respond if I need to. I'm going to check out the clip and respond if I need to. But I respect the brother Math Hoffa because yeah, Vlad yeah, tried I, to I will. I'll tell a joke, but but I'm never going to lie, Umar. And sometimes I'll tell I'll, I'll tell a joke and it may be stretching what Umar has said. But then I always tell people I'm just joking. OK, but I'm not going to lie on the guy. I never. In fact, there's people who have lied on Umar. And it, it actually not that it upsets me. Let me not exaggerate it. Uh, it doesn't sit well with me. Because I've had plenty of people lie on me and I didn't like that. So why would I allow Umar? You see, and another thing is just not right. It's not right to do that. Now, I've, the people have said all kinds of stuff about Umar that I knew was not true, you know, and uh, I, I don't appreciate that. You know, if, if you've been lied on like I've been lied on, then you're not going to want anybody to lie on anybody else. You see, 
And that's why when I'm up here, if I joke and I'll stretch it a little bit, I'll tell people I'm just joking. He didn't say that. I'm just I'm just playing. I'll tell people that. OK, but but other than that, when I whatever I say, I have receipts to show it. It's coming out of Umar's own mouth. I don't have to stretch it or anything like that. I don't have to clip something here, put something here. None of that stuff. It's not necessary. Here we go. Man, he was about to go for the bait for a minute. He was about to take the bait for a minute, but then he pulled back. So I can respect him on that. I heard that Israel is getting the Democratic Republic of the Congo to airlift Palestinian refugees to the Congo. I'm talking to my Congolese Africans right now. Why would they go to the Congo, Umar? What are you talking about? That don't make no sense. Israelis are going to go to the Congo? For what? what? What are you talking about? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I don't. I'm talking to my Congolese Africans right now. Can somebody help me understand why the Congolese government would even consider bringing Palestinian refugees into the Congo? Can somebody help me overstand, understand, and understand? Can somybody help me understand, yeah, understand, and understand yeah. why the Congolese everything. government would consider bringing Palestinian refugees to the Congo. I'm against it for three reasons. I got a video with Umar, because Umar was talking about his, did he, Umar didn't say anything about his neck, did he? I thought, did, did, he, did he say that? I, I can't remember. I, I can't remember if the Ku Klux chat said brought up the neck thing. Did Umar bring up the neck thing? Because he all over the place. I don't forgot already. But I'm getting old. I'm not against the Palestinians getting refuge. I'm not against the Palestinians. Oh, he's saying the Palestinians. I thought he's okay. I'm I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Okay. All right. All right. My bad. Let me let me take a step back. I gotta retract. I apologize, Umar. I I, I misquoted you. Okay. So my bad on that. I, I messed up. I apologize. I, I for some reason I thought he said he was Israeli. I'm tripping. Oh, he said it. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I couldn't remember. The reason why is because. Uh, well, I, I don't want to be petty because I have Vito Umar. He up there doing a live stream with with a no shirt on. I mean, it's so ridiculous. It's one, and, he, and he's done it several times. He's done it several. I don't, I just don't get it. Why would you do that, Umar? It, it, anyway, Palestinians getting refuge. I'm against the Palestinians getting refuge in the Congo. Number one. Number one. Arabs are racist against African people. Not all. See, when you make statements like that, that's a that's a racist statement because you're saying they're they're all like that. Well, that's not true. What are you talking about? And how do you know that? And stop saying Arabs. I know he said a right. Stop it. Arabs are racist against African people. We cannot mind you, Umar. He was raised Muslim too, by the way. His daddy was Muslim. His, his mama was Christian, and his grandma would go with him. Not have Palestinians coming to the Congo mistreating African people. That's number one. Number two, yeah, he, he, they will yeah, be he, weaponized by the Arab power structure. They will be weaponized by the Arab power structure to gentrify the land and occupy the resources. What in the world are you talking about? This guy is so out there in left field. You got the people over there. Pal anyway. I was about to go give me some apple sauce. I'm telling told myself two things I got to work on. I got to get to here on time, be on time. And I need to stop with apple sauce. I got they will be weaponized by the Arab power structure to gentrify the land and weaponize the resources against indigenous Congolese Africans. Weaponize the resources? What are you talking against about? Against indigenous Congolese Africans. Against indigenous Congolese Africans. So I'm not supporting that. I'm not supporting that. Here he goes. I am not supporting Palestinian refugees coming to the Congo. That is not going to end well for Africa. Umar, you act like you up over there and you running things. You up there living in your mama closet. What are you talking about? Sitting up here. 
if we if we allow that to happen in 20 years, if we allow Israel to force the Congolese government, if we allow Israel to force the Congolese government to airlift Palestinian refugees to the Congo, the richest piece of land on the planet Earth, the richest piece of land on the planet yeah, Earth. Have, yeah, if we allow Arabs to come uh, into the Congo, uh, Congo in 25 yeah, I know that, years. That's the thing. It don't even make no sense. Talk about that. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 no, it don't make no sense. Okay. And maybe it is happening. It, I, I don't see. It just still, it, That don't even make any sense. Whether it's Palestinians or anyway, no, whatever. The Congo is one of the most corrupt and unstable parts. Of, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It don't make no sense. What do you think the Congo will look like? In 25 years, what do you think the Congo will Leave look it, like? Don't do that. In 25 years, what do you think the Congo will look like? <laughs> the Arabs will colonize the Congo. This is an Arab power structure initiative. This is nothing but the Arab. He don't have no proof of this whatsoever. He just be coming off the dome, dome, just talking crazy, crazy and reckless, too. Just crazy and reckless. All right, let's take a break. We want to watch Umar do some shopping. Umar was snacking in the store. He got food on his beer. Umar was just rolling through the aisles, just grabbing what he could to get a quick little snack. That's one thing you don't do if you're black. You don't do that. Even if you're going to pay for it. Why are people though? They bought it. They be snacking. Oh, here, Timmy. Here, go ahead. Have some of this. I'll pay for it later. Yeah, you no. Know, but you black, you can't do it. You open up the breast. As soon as you open we have a Negro on aisle six. He has just opened up a bag of chips. We need security right away. He's gonna give it to the, <laughs> he's gonna give it to little Tyrone. We need to get security. <laughs> uh uh, I ain't doing it. <laughs> I'm serious. I ain't even gonna chance it. I was gonna pay for it too. I said, but you know what? Now you might get away with it if you have like a baby, like a toddler, but nah. Anyway, <laughs> Umar was just eating before he started. <laughs> Listen, Umar is funny. <laughs> he, he, he hilarious. I uh, yeah, he, I think he's gonna. He's trying to. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I had to think about that. I said, wait a minute now. <laughs> what are we what are we talking about here? No, that's gone. You're gone too far. <laughs> uh, uh, you, you've gone too far, sir. <laughs> anyway, here we go. He up here looking like Oswald Bates. <laughs> he gotta be on the camera. Who are these people trying? Let these people get their food. Yes, sir. He's shopping in Panama right now. I'm at the Panamanian Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> boy, who are hilarious? Boy, he's he's so funny. <laughs> that roof is real low for for a Walmart, ain't it? Dang, they got some long lines down here too. They put they don't think they got I don't think they got self checkout. They open pop. Oh, don't show us what you get anymore. Don't do it. <laughs> He got a live stream, it don't he? Excuse me, bro. They gotta have self checkout, right? We got a thousand people to do. You want to hit the like button? I appreciate. It. Just a quick little hit. Well, it looked like they got self checkout. This must be a whole bunch of people up in there. Wait, that's not self checkout. 
I might have it, Baba. How much is it? No, I'm sorry. Uh, I can't do that to you, bro. Cut it out. Huh? Gumar was going to pay for it. The guy was like, I know you ain't got no money. You're only using the donor's money on food. For, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a perfect match. Uh, zebra shake and alkaline water, family. <laughs> There's no need for him to be streaming this either. Tight on his head. I'm chilling with my Panamanian Africans. Your what? Your pan of what? Africans. <laughs> I'm chilling with my Panamanian Africans. <laughs> Had to go out to the Walmart, you know what I'm saying? Get something to eat, snack on some drinks. Central America, I'm in the building. Cologne City, Wednesday, two to six, pull up. Umar, open your eyes, please. I don't know what he was saying. Something crazy. <laughs> Panamanian. <laughs> I don't know. Always liked your picture right there. That's really cool. I like that. <laughs> Tell me, leave my people alone. <laughs> Germanian. <laughs> Germanian. <laughs> okay. Dicky, that's what I thought he said. I thought he said Pomeranian. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all didn't walk right by me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord have mercy. I was caught up, Bob. I was caught up. <laughs> he said, I don't believe it. What are you doing? I said, nah, yeah, I just. You are funny. <laughs> Panama, I'm in the building. Where all my Panama City Africans at? See y'all in Cologne City, Wednesday, 2 to 6. All right. Oh, I thought, oh, that's the baby. I thought he said Umar. I said, who? Come on, Omar. They hear a baby. You think someone's calling his name? To, yeah, it's, it's all me. Y'all forget, there's a storm coming through, so you might hear the, the water hitting. It's about to be snowing like crazy. Uh, Umar, the baby crying ain't got, or the talk, ain't got nothing to do with you. Stop it. All right, just stop. That's all I know. He he, he even hear a baby going, yeah. He's like, oh, he's he he calling me. He, I'm Big Papa. No, man, that's what that's what the kids, that's what the babies do. They do that all the time. Trust me, I know I miss that. I miss those days. Okay, um, let me, I'm, I'm behind. Let me get to some of these. There's a couple of chat, uh, super chats that came through. Uh, let's see. Uh, this was, uh, he's going to a new mission to have. Okay, I, I got, we got that one earlier. Uh, thank you. Jonathan says he wears his ascot around his, what is an ascot? I don't even know what that is. Maybe I shouldn't look it up, Jonathan. Don't do this to me now. Oh, it's a tie. It's a type of tie. It's a neck band with wide pointing wings, traditionally made of plate gray. Yeah, yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, that that's more like in uh in Europe, though, isn't it? Yeah, that that's they call it a royal ascot. Ascot. So if you go look at the old pictures. I mean, it's, it looks like a tie, but it's like it's different. I actually like that. That's a nice little. It's a nice style. The way they have it folded over like this. Yeah, yeah. I, but I see what you're saying. Hey, you learn something every day. I'm gonna have to get me one, fam. To just do a show with one of them all. I ain't gonna spend no money on that. I never, you know, I'm just not into that. But I see what you're talking about. Um, it's traditionally made of pale gray patterned silk. The wide tie is usually patterned, folded over, and fastened with a, a tie pin or a tie clip. It is usually uh, reserved for formal wear with morning dress uh, for daytime weddings uh, and worn with a cutaway morning coat and strip gray formal trousers. 
Yeah. So Umar just has it on his on his chin. And it actually looks like that. It actually does look like. Thank, thank you, Jonathan. Learn something every day. Truth is, using logic says people who suffer from narcissistic personality disorder generally uh, have fragile ego, egos. And Umar definitely does. Uh, they tend to have an inflated ego, too. Uh, there's a term, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but if, if someone challenges a narcissist or they prove a narcissist wrong, the narcissist will go into a denial mode. But then there's something called, um, uh, uh, excuse me if I'm getting this wrong, a narcissistic injury. And it has to do with the ego, that the ego is so hurt. And then the narcissist will react in, in, in particular ways. U Umar, he, his uh, ego is way out there and it's fragile. He doesn't like to be challenged. He doesn't like to be debated. He doesn't like to be questioned. And that's why whenever platforms have him on and someone and maybe on there that disagrees what Umar does and he can't help himself, he starts to yell. And he starts to over talk and then he'll keep uh, no and what I, no and, and they'll try to get there but he'll keep going and going until they give up and then he'll make his point that's how he is but that has to do with ego and i want to tell you something truth using because I, I have these older videos of umar when he actually had a radio show you guys would be amazed at the difference because he actually had other people on his radio show and he would give them an opportunity to speak and he would listen y'all want me to i can i can well i don't want to get too sidetracked but it's amazing that the difference and I think he's always he's always had an ego problem, but it just it got out of control and and it was probably already out of control. But it got to the point where he has no control at this point. And I'm going to tell you that the thing that really pushed him over the top was the levels of success that came up in the Hidden Colors series. And Umar internalized all of that success as if it was him. He's the one that made that pop off the way that it did. And then he started getting more and more speaking opportunities. This feeds his ego, it feeds his ego. And people tell him you're the greatest and feeds his ego, feeds. And then he asked for money. People are sending him millions of dollars up to this point. That just feeds the ego, feeds the ego. Then the narcissism kicks in. And I think he already, he's already had these issues anyway, certain narcissistic personality traits. But what I mean by it kicks in, it goes into overdrive because the, the more, uh, uh, more well known he became, the more he, be he got criticized because people started to notice how there were so many contradictions and he, he was a hypocrite on so many different levels. He says that you black women shouldn't have blonde weave, but then he's dealing with a stripper uh, who has blonde weave. He tells you black men who you should be dating, but he's dealing with a stripper. He tells, you know, black men, y'all need to date and marry uh, black women, but he's dealing with a stripper, noncommittal. And he got three, he got two baby mamas at least. It was more than that, but we'll just say two. So his his ego, uh, it got overinflated. And then when people start to call him out, I think that the, the narcissism part just got he just couldn't handle it. And to this day, he's like that. He's, he, he's like that. He's, he's, he's been like that for a long time. I just think it's gotten more and more out of control. And the more Internet reach and the more attention, that's what it is. The more attention that he has received, uh, the more and more things have gotten out of control. His ego is so overinflated. Uh, and if you go back to the UNIA days, same thing. Narcissism, personality traits was there too. A sense of, of uh, a false sense of superiority. Also thinking that you're uh, better than everybody else. Also feeling entitled. He felt entitled to the money, the UNIA money. Okay, there's a sense of entitlement. I go on and on and on. But yeah, he, he has a very fragile ego. Thanks for using logic. D that all says, is there uh, in there looking for zebra cakes? Yeah, they, they probably, I'm sure they got them out there. Zebra cakes, so that's, that's a worldwide phenomenon, family. I, I was going to get me some this month. <laughs> I got some for my kids uh, one time and they didn't like them at all. They said it was too sweet and it tasted nasty. But, so I never got them again. Thanks, D. That is all. Uh, Sharita says, Umar needs a hand. Well, he, he, needs, uh, he needs guidance. Um, he doesn't take well um, to guidance. And, and like I said, he doesn't take what a criticism. In fact, I remember there was a time where probably shouldn't even be saying this. No, I'm not, I'm not going to share that. Well, I, I won't because I was going to go pull up the video, but I'm not going to do that. But there were elders in the black conscious community that were trying to get him under control and, and kind of ring him in because he was out way out there. And this was around the time with the SETI rant. Some of y'all may know what I'm talking about. And then the also the beef with, with Tariq Nasheed, that too. Uh, but he, he doesn't want anybody to tell him what he should be doing, but he does need guidance, you know, and he needs a PR team, he, but he, he ain't about that. He's trying to get money however, however way he can and trying to crush as many cookies as possible. It's a self-destructive lifestyle. Can you imagine someone, a PR team trying to deal with this guy? That'd be, that'd be an absolute nightmare. All the controversies this guy gets in, they would say, no, you shouldn't post that. You shouldn't talk like that. You shouldn't be saying that. You shouldn't be talking about pajama mamas. Umar would throw a fit. 
because he again someone else telling him something what he needs to be doing the the black con there was some black conscious leaders from back in the day they were well established in the black conscious community uh someone uh, uh one of them i knew and i actually interviewed one time and they were really trying to reel umar johnson in but it, that didn't happen it didn't happen some of y'all may know what i'm talking about but i ain't gonna i ain't gonna pull up the video right now thanks for for the super chat uh how's it going uh, andrea i hope you're doing well and uh happy new year to you Umar makes up things as he goes. He knows that people that follow him and take him seriously seriously are ignorant. Some following think uh, some following uh, think he's funny. I don't. The other thing is, I, I would propose that uh, that his his most of the people who follow him, they're not going to go and fact check Umar. They're not going to fact check him. They're not going to do their own personal research. In fact, I think that's one of the reasons why they follow Umar anyway, because they want to hear uh, someone speaking as if he he's intelligent and he's in the know. He's knowledgeable. Umar is actually not. He's not into I don't consider him to be intelligent either. There was a time I kind of thought, but no, no, no. He's crafty and there's a difference. See, he's conniving. There's a difference between being conniving and being intelligent. Because because in my mind, to, to be intelligent, there has to be some uh, level of ethics and morality associated with it. That's just me. That's the, uh, philosophically speaking. But an intelligent person also has some sense of, of, uh, of ethics and morals. You know, they have... Um, They have compassion for others and empathy. You know, they can sympathize too. Umar doesn't have any of that, you know? Uh, but I think I think there are people who follow Umar that uh, they just want to hear what he has to say because they're unwilling to do their own research and they don't fact check him. So they may just accept what he says uh, as being 100% true. The other thing, Andrea, is, yeah, there's there's people who follow him simply because he's hilarious. You know, he, he's funny in a weird way and, and sometimes in a disturbed way. And it's that's like uh, today it's like drama after drama after drama. It's funny, you know, but there are people that they they find that to be entertaining. And that's why they follow Umar simply because of that. Again, other, other people uh, don't find him to be funny at all. There's things that, that he says sometimes that are very disturbing. I don't find it to be funny. But in general, his antics, you know, and, and his behavior, sometimes it could be funny. It could be quite funny to me. Uh, thanks, Andrea, for the soup chat. I appreciate it. And happy new year. OK, let's get back to it. Here we go. Structure. Why can't they take them to du Dubai? Oh, wait, let's finish this one. And did we do the brother uh, that? Let me know because I have the brother. King Kong. Cool we can do that next and we'll finish up oh, with the other. Man. Let me know. You know, I, I, you, you, you got, you got, you got one of uh, Facebook and something, but you, you, you know, doing Facebook, Instagram. Instagram. So, this so when, is when Instagram. They, when, when they see it, they're going to say, what? They're going to say, wow, regular, regular society. Yeah. Oh, you got the air on, Bob? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to get it. It's probably hot down there. Yeah, it's got exclusive. Yeah, if we, if we can get to that uh, 500, I appreciate it. Hit that like button, y'all. Thank you so much, uh, lady. Okay, that's the end of the video. Okay, did I play uh, the, the Brother Wit video already? I don't think I played it. Okay, if I did, uh, I'm going to put it up right here. Uh, Y'all just let me know. And I'll, I'll go back to the other video and then we'll finish up for today. Oh, and by the way. And by the way. And by the way. The philosophy and opinions of the Honorable Marcus Garvey will be a course. It won't be sprinkled into history. It won't be sprinkled into black history. It will be a course. You will study Garvey kindergarten through 12th grade. And by the way, my ancestor, my kinsman, my cousin, my blood relative, the philosophy of Frederick Douglass will be a course. It won't be spring. He's not your blood relative. He's not even your cousin. That's just a story you done made up. And you be all over the place. One time you're saying you're a direct descendant. Then you say he, had, he may have had a cousin. And because I, I saw the old video. I have it in the archive. So I watched it recently. He's, he may have had a cousin, cousin Joe, whatever his name was, and he may have been. So therefore, the slave uh, master impregnated Frederick Douglass mama and then also somebody else and they cousins. I don't know if it's true, but that's what the people say. You're not a descendant of Fred, Frederick Douglass. OK, now you're saying he's your cousin. Go there. It will be a course. You will master it. 
Garvey Scholars and Douglas Scholars. Garvey Scholars and Douglas Scholars. Garvey Scholars and Douglas Scholars. Now you ask the question, what will the tuition be? Keep those donations coming. I ain't seen none in a while. Dollar sign FDMG school. Keep those donations coming. I ain't seen none in a while. Dollar sign F. What's the tuition, Umar? DMG school. Keep those donations coming. What's the tuition? We only hear all this other rambling and talking in circles. What's the tuition cost? I ain't seen none in a while. Dollar sign FDMG school, brothers and sisters. Will I teach the Bible? What's the tuition? I told y'all. This is what he does this every single time. You guys got to watch out for these scammers because they all do this. Polite did this. He in jail. Uh, Jay Morrison still does this. They won't answer the questions. They'll, they'll start talking in circles and you're like, what did he just say? Wait, the question was this. What are you talking about? And that's Umar. But guess what? I have the audio where he tells people what the tuition will be. And he said it was going to be five hundred dollars a month, a month for your child to, a school, to to attend. And guess what? Over there in Wilmington is one of the most impoverished places. It, it's it, for sure in that state. But it, it's 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 when he per, uh, the year before he purchased these abandoned properties, Wilmington was ranked sixth in the nation for violent crime. So it's impoverished. It's it's crime written. If you guys go and go on Google and you go look on, on Google Maps, just walk around, or just scroll around over there. It's 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 a uh, drug infested. So so these people up over here, how are they going to afford to pay five hundred dollars a month? That I mean, that gets it's got to that's going to be close to five thousand dollars a year for one child. For one just for one child. But you, you see how he didn't answer the question? Start sniffing. In the spiritual and astrological course curriculum, I believe there will be a place for that. Because most of our people were, uh, believe in the Bible. And I want my students to be able to relate to anybody. I want them to master your religion. Well, no. Well, when I say per year, I'm, well, I'm talking about uh, for the school year. You know, you figure it's going to be nine, maybe ten, almost ten months, something like that. So I'm, I'm kind of, you know, that, that's what I'm saying. I, I want to be fair. It's going to be close to 5,000. We should probably say something like 4,800 bucks or something like that. Just for one child. And ours. I want him to master your religion and ours. I'm going to yeah, have brothers you, you from the that? Nation of Islam come mm -hmm. in and teach on the Nation of Islam science. Why not? That's not my science, but we respect it. And we want our children to know it from the people who live it. I'm going to have the gods and earths come in and teach their science that's not my science but i want yeah make sure you're gonna have lord jamar my children to understand it from the people who live it i will have the african hebrews come in and teach their science that's not my science but i want our children to understand it from the people who live it i will have the nawapians come in and teach their science that's not my science. thank you moon again what Can you believe this guy? Let me let me go into my archive right here. Hold on one second. This guy, he he, he ain't. Let's let's do two quick videos. He's talking about. The Nuwabians, but who was the Nuwabian leader? That's a quick history lesson for people. Then, we, then we're going to get back to it. Who, who was the, the Nuwabian leader? Y'all, let me go pull up these two videos right here. Chapters. And we're going into. What do I have it under? Oh, right here. Yeah. Let's pull up this one and let's pull up this other one. It's only going to take about three minutes and then we'll get back to the video we've done for today. We'll be back tomorrow. So shorter show tonight.
you pull up this other one. Malachi Z. York. Okay. Be in jail right now. That was Polite's idol. Look. Okay. You understand you're charged with 40 counts of aggravated child molestation. If you could receive, receive a maximum sentence of 30 years in confinement for each count, that you're charged with 34 counts of child molestation, that you could receive a maximum sentence of 20 years in confinement for each count, that you're charged with one count of sexual exploitation of children, and you could receive a maximum sentence of 20 years in confinement, and you're charged with two counts of influencing witnesses, and you could receive a maximum sentence of 10 years in confinement for each count, and that you could receive a minimum sentence overall of 10 years on probation. I'm telling you the most and the least. Do you understand that? Actually, Your Honor, it was 10 years in I got a child station, and then it was 10 years in confinement. But the minimum would be 10 years in confinement. you understand that? And that's you understand you have a right to an attorney, and in fact, your lawyer, Mr. Aurora, is here with you and representing you. Is that correct? I'm going to inform you of certain other rights that you have, Mr. York, and inform you of the fact that if you plead guilty, you give up these rights. You have a right to trial by jury. You're presumed to be innocent. You have a right to confront any witnesses the state presents against you. You have a right to subpoena any witnesses you want to appear and testify for you. You have a right to testify and offer other evidence if you want to. It's Malachi York. You can also find him on. He had different aliases, too. I have, I have someone who has receipts on him from way back in the day. Uh, he has so many different aliases, but Polite mirrored his, uh, really his, I don't even know what you want to call this. I don't even want to say career, but it's his black conscious career. He mirrored it to the best of his ability, uh, Malachi York. Uh, and he's in jail now for SA of a minor. Okay. So you guys can look it up because, I mean, it, it's, it's it, it, I, I, I don't even know how to phrase this. <clears throat> but it, it's the single most egregious essay of children by one person in the United States of America uh, history. Something, and I'm, I wish I could phrase it differently. I don't even like talking about this. It gets on my nerves. You have a right to the assistance of an attorney during the trial. You have a right not to incriminate yourself. Did anyone promise you anything to cause you in this guilty case? Are you satisfied with the services of your attorneys, not only Mr. Aurora, but your other attorneys? Were you able to hear and understand my statements and questions to you? He's on the old lady matters, please. <clears throat> Your Honor, we've drawn up this it's for trial of not guilty plea, it's your guilty plea. And uh, it comes down to the defendant about our case, withdraws his plea of not guilty in this case. Place to come to your rights and plead guilty as charged defenses of. I've already enumerated those on the record. They're the same ones I've enumerated on before, Your Honor. I signed on behalf of the state. Pass and sign on behalf of the state. Clear. This for your plea. I accept your plea. After his plea, the state and federal prosecutors recommend that Malachi York be in prison for 15 years and serve three years of supervised release. But on June 25, 2003, U.S. District Judge Hugh Lawson rejected the federal plea bargain, arguing that York should be given more time in jail, obviously. And he got a whole lot more than that. On June 30th, 2003, Malachi York was given an opportunity to plead guilty to the federal charges and face the possibility of a longer prison sentence or go to trial. 
Uh, Judge Hugh Lawson said he will consider a notion to have Malachi adjusted to see if he's mentally competent to stand trial. York will be given another opportunity to, to either plead guilty or to go to trial. But anyway, he he got uh, it's, it's, I, I mean, I can pull it up to give you the exact figure, but uh, it, it's basically he's in he ain't getting out. Let me share something else with y'all because I want to bring this back around because Umar was talking about how he's going to have a new audience come up there and teach. Watch this. See, when you see, I'm speaking on behalf of the, 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 the children or the, or the people that, 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 that had to testify or that testified. That had to testify based on what, that he did, he did do something to them. Well, okay, who's this over here on the right? That's my right. Maybe your left. Who's this over here? Who's now in jail for SA and a minor? Who is this? I, I say had to testify because some people didn't testify. So some people felt that in, in, in that they had to do this, like it's something that they had to do. For me, it felt like it was something that I had to do. Because one, like I told you, my both of my sisters went, went through the same thing I went through. That's polite. Hey. Both of my older sisters. Do you mind sharing? I don't know nothing. Sharing, okay, well, both of my sisters have been molested. By who? By Malachi Young. By Pops, Barber, you know, Esau, and Mom Esau, whatever. You know, they've been, they've been they've, he has sex with them. And they at was, what ages? At what ages? I mean, you know, if you want to get the accurate number, you can ask them. Around what age? You know, I, I mean, 13, to 14, 7, 8. You know, and I will only speak for myself as far as the yeah, personal no doubt, things that course. I've been through. Of course, you. And I, and, and, as far as yeah, you, you have know, to be right, Dominique. Want to get graphic? One, you know, okay, I'm a dude. I'm not gonna be. And I've been wanting to start this series on polite, but I just, I mean, my schedule. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it, make it happen. But I, I want to go through everything including uh, crypto roots, rest in peace. Walking walk around saying that I've been molested, this, this, and that happened. As a man, you don't want to be going around saying that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So when in my situation or my, my the way I grew up, I was ready to move on. I left in 2001. I was ready to just live my life, move on, whatever. You know what I'm saying? The, 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 the people start doing the investigations and stuff. The FBI started doing the investigations, started trying to get statements from people. Both my sisters, went ahead and gave their statements. Yeah. I still had nothing to do with it, no statement, no nothing. When I realized, okay, they're about to go to court, you know, and I went through the same thing that they went through. Like, I'm my mother only son, you know what I'm saying? So I'm the man of the family, you know what I'm saying? My sisters were gonna stand up for themselves and, and I'm, you know what I'm saying? So I, I was like, okay, well, I, and then that's when I gave my, te my, my, you know, my statement. And that's when I decided that, you know, that I was gonna go ahead and, and, and do it. Nobody wants to see they, they, they family go get locked away. So I really understand how hard it is for people that, that's deeply involved in it also. And people gotta understand, I was born and raised in it too. So I understand from, from inside out also what it feels like not to have this person around given, still giving leadership. You know, so it's not, it's not no stranger, no, no, no random person that's saying, oh, this happened, this happened. I mean, this, you know, this, this stuff, like I was seven years old. You know what I'm saying? I was upstate New York before, after Brooklyn. You know, I was upstate New York when I, when, when he first, you know, did, touched me or whatever. In you know, and so from seven to fourteen, seven years that I went through this. You know what I'm saying? And that's my story. Would you say there's been over 20 children molested by Dr. York? I would say so. I mean, I, I would say, I would say that it was, you know, for, if I could confirm people that. That I, that I can strongly confirm, it'll be about 15 or 20 people. Your mind, I okay. wanna know, what is he to you? Who is he to you? Who he is to me? And on top of now, I'm a straight. You know what I'm saying? That's the only way my whole argument in this whole situation is should people be locked up based on what people believe? I got the right to be angry. You know why? Because yeah. the law promises me something different. The law promises me that we will lock people up beyond a shadow of a doubt. That's what the law promises me. Yeah. But in this case, it was up to 12 people to have that reasonable doubt or not. And those 12 people made the no, decision. It's not, not, so what's the point? If you want to fight it's, for it's freedom, your fight for, if you fight take the for it for another not. reason. Don't fight for it because he's innocent of a molesting kid. Let's say he molested a thousand children. This isn't this. Factually. Okay. Genetic evidence and everything. Things that we don't deny scientifically. We say, wow, okay, true, 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 true. If someone was to ask me, would, would you still worship him as your most high, acknowledge him as your most high God. I would have to. I don't identify with everything he does there. Much like I believe most Christians don't identify with everything they got. I got more, hold on. I'm your host, Muna. 
And we're going to just hit some a little bit about the school, the accusations that's coming out, your trips and your travels and the things that you want to do in the future. Mm -hmm. So are you are you ready for Africa tomorrow? Yes, ma'am. I'm ready for Africa. Very much looking forward to it. It'll be my second group trip to the continent. We went last year March to Morocco and got, <coughs> I got something took about 40 to brothers and Hold sisters on. with us, most of them. It was their first time being back home. Enjoyed it so much, I decided to do it again. And so this year it's going to be Egypt and Ghana. Looking forward to that. I've never been to Egypt, never been to Egypt, but I'm a big fan of the antiquities of Kemet. So I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to that. Um, and it's just going to be a very, very powerful time. Uh, while I'm there, I'm going to be investigating different things. Most uh, primarily would be the potential of uh, erecting the Fred Douglas Marcus Garvey Academy there. But looking forward to it, I'm very exhausted. I'm very exhausted. A lot has been going on uh, the past couple of months. Mm -hmm. So I just need a break. So I can't wait to get on that airplane tomorrow and just sleep. It's an evening flight, so I'll be able to rest up really, really well. But looking forward to getting back to Africa, getting back to um, Ghana, and reconnecting to that ancestral energy. Okay. Why do you feel like these trips are so important? Well, number one, I look at Africa as the spiritual battery for all African people. Mm -hmm. That's home. And just like with any battery, you can never really charge until you are connected to a platform that was designed specifically to recharge your energy. That's what mm -hmm. Africa is for us. We spend so much time away from Africa dissipating our energy. I think it's important that we go back at least annually to recharge that spiritual battery, that cultural battery, that uh, intellectual battery. I think that going to Africa changes people lives. I know it changed mine. The first mm -hmm. time I went 2005, of course I've been back almost 10 times since, been about 10 different countries now, and it just does a whole lot for me to put me back into perspective, reconnect me to my roots. I think it, for me, it's a matter of life and death. I don't think I can stay away from Africa for more than two or three years at a time. It's that essential to who I am. Wow, that's deep. Um, what is the Pan-African Research and Reparation Task Force? The Pan-African Research and- Let me skip through. And repatriation would be most suitable for heritage. Kenya, because I would have an easier time adjusting to Liberia than I would Senegal. Even mm -hmm. though I love Senegal, I don't speak French or Wolof. The mm -hmm. Pan-African perspective. So would it be with some supports? Could you just- So do you believe that the people who go back are gonna be a part of the program or are you just put, bringing them back and then they're doing their own thing? Or it will is, be both. Okay. Because we wanna give them the independence mm -hmm. to utilize whatever goals and dreams and talents that they have. Mm -hmm. So we don't wanna dictate, we don't want it to be cultish so to speak, but at the same time, they will be obligated to Team Pan-African and they will be obligated to give back to the African country where they live. We wanna make sure we don't become parasitic to Africa. Mm -hmm. A lot of Western-born, Americanized Africans go back home and we become parasitic, meaning we go and we extract, we take, just like the European does. Mm -hmm. So I go to Africa, I become a millionaire. Yeah. But what have you done for Africa? You're okay. just a white man and a black face. You've done nothing different. And so our legal team, we're going to, excuse me, help their defense of Dr. Umar Johnson. And when you look at any of our great organizers, if you look at the. Listen to this. The Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. If you look at the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. If you look at Dr. Malachi Z. York. If There's one other video. There's one other thing I want to play for you, but I, I can't seem to, to find it. And some of y'all know which video I'm talking about. I'm going to keep looking for it, but uh, if I find it, I'll pull it back up. Uh, I think we were right $15. here. $15. That's not my science, but we want the children to know them all. They're almost at the 5,500. I'm producing uh, look, look up, black please. gods. Look, 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 look
your child's school getting them ready to be a college slave. Yeah, he's I'm preparing our children York. to be black gods. He's saying Dr. York is a great leader. This school is producing revolutionary pan-African nationalist gods. That's what the hell we doing. Brother Witt, $25. Thank you, brother. You canceled the payment? Brother Witt, you canceled your $25? Must have a white girl. It's okay, brother. Love you anyway. But anyway. <laughs> he was so mad. Tata had asked for this book a couple of weeks ago, and I couldn't find it, but I finally found it. I spent so much time getting it because people ask that they uh, send a super chat with the request. I do my absolute best to try to fulfill it in that moment, but if I can't find it, I'll be looking. One more time. That's what the hell we doing. Brother Witt, $25. Thank you, brother. You canceled the payment? Brother Witt, you canceled your $25? Must have a white girl. It's okay, brother. Love you anyway. But anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> He was and mad. He was mad about that. I am that, so buddy. serious about the school. I don't even like thinking about the school, y'all. I don't even think about it. Except getting it fixed up. Because when my thoughts start rolling, I get all caught up. And I can just see our young men in their FDMG uniforms. I can just see them planting their own crops. I can see them marching to the cadence of the Garvey songs that we're going to be producing. Garvey songs? Oh, yes. Re really? Oh yes. You gonna you gonna produce some Garvey songs? <laughs> what in the world? I don't even remember hearing him say this. But Umar said he gonna produce a, some Garvey songs, and evidently Maria's gonna be inside the studio doing the rap part, the rap lyrics, because Umar said, and Umar Johnson, if I was understand this, he said that they were gonna turn, they were gonna create a music studio inside of the the, the so-called school, these abandoned buildings, and he said we, he was thinking about changing the main office into a recording studio. Even though this was supposed to be a school for black boys. That's what Ubar said. Our young girls will be taught the science of being a midwife and a doula. They won't be able to practice it, but they can learn the science of how to deliver a baby as children before they even get to the age where they can deliver babies. Y'all have no idea what we gonna do. What? Oh, Lord have mercy. Another coon. Here we go. I guess you can't. Let me see if I can get him out of here. Nah, my Facebook frozen a little bit. I'll take him out later. I'll block him later. <laughs> I'll block him later. You need to talk to me personally. Don't give me your number because I'm not going to call you, but you can reach out to me. Send me an email. I prefer emails over voicemails. I prefer emails over voicemails. I prefer emails over voicemails. My email address is drumarjohnson at yahoo.com. D R U M A R Johnson at yahoo.com. D R, thank you, Sister Keisha, $40. D R U M A R Johnson at yahoo.com. Okay. The video I was looking for, I can't find, I have it, but I just couldn't find it. But it's a video, an old video where Umar talks about how the Nuwabians, uh, and hit the one if you guys remember this, how the Nuwabians there, his uh, security. And he uh, gives a shout out to Malachi York and says something to the effect that I'm paraphrasing. I uh, hope you get out soon. Hit the one. It okay, just goes to show you how twisted all of this is. All of this is just it's a, a big old mess. I have the video. I just have not been able to find it. If I find it before the live stream is over with, I'll play it. Uh, if not, uh, don't hold me to it. OK, but I, I'm not making it up. If anyone else has remember seeing that video, I've played it in the past. Uh, just hit the one, okay, just for verification purposes. I don't want nobody saying, I don't remember. No, you making it up. No, he, he that's what he said. And I'm paraphrasing, okay? All right, let's get back to the video that we started with. And then we're, gonna, we're almost done here. Uh, I'm going to try, try to get it uh, get done here within the next 15 minutes. Here they go. go to the United Arab Emirates. Why can't they go to Morocco or Egypt? Why can't they go to any of why can't they go to Iran or Iraq yeah. or Kuwait? Yeah, they gave why do Palestinian time. refugees need to Speaking, come? We're going to come back to this. Hold on, because I pulled up another document. I want to I have it in my archive. I want to show you all in just a minute um, to the richest continent on the face of the excuse me, the richest country on the richest continent on the face of the earth. I vote no. 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 I am totally okay. against it. I want them to get refuge. Don't get me wrong, brothers and sisters. We wish goodwill on all human beings. 
I want the Palestinians who need safety and security to be airlifted out of Palestine to safety and security, but they need to go to an Arab state. They need to go to an Arab country. They cannot come to the Congo. That is nothing but economic strategy by the Arab nations, trying to get Arabs in the Congo so they can start robbing and stealing the land and the resources. I am against it. I also heard that there was supposed to be a, a lecture event in Ghana featuring the former okay, I, I found it. AU ambassador. I found it on, uh, I have the original uh, version, <clears throat> excuse me, but let me go ahead and play this for you all uh, right quick. Hold on one second, everybody. This is an, it's not that it's edited, but they have a graphic up here, but I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and play it just so you guys, I, I don't want people to think I'm making anything up. Okay, let me do a screen share. Okay, let me know if you guys can hear the audio. Here we go. Dr. Umar Johnson, Prince of Pan-Africanism, we live. Detroit, Shrine of the Black Madonna, numero uno, number one. I'm out building with the guys. We go. Shout out to the Detroit, the Wapia Nation for doing go. my security. Yes, Looking out for Dr. Umar Johnson, they have my back. The Wapians all day long. Shout out to Dr. York, you're getting out soon. Hold your head, Elder. Shout out to the whole Detroit, everybody who came out. I told y'all. I have the original one, okay? This one right here has a graphic overlay on top of it, but the point is that uh, this, and there it is right there. There, there it go. There go the original. Hold on one second. That's the thing about me. I, I would much rather play the original that I downloaded because I don't want nobody saying I made anything up. I don't do that. I don't lie on this guy. I, people lie on him. I don't appreciate it. People lie on me. I don't appreciate it. People take uh, clips of Umar saying one thing. I, I remember one time that someone, I can't remember what it was, but they took a clip of Umar and just took a small little segment of it. And it sounded like he was saying one thing. But if you play the whole video, you realize he wasn't actually saying that he said it, but that's not what his point was. I remember I, we did a show and I, I, I it's like, that's not what he, and I don't, I don't appreciate it because people done that with me. I don't appreciate that. So I would much rather now, I'm going to show you all the, the video, uh, and this is the down, I downloaded this video. In fact, I'm going to take it, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to put it on, on uh, so that I can get to it easily. I'm going to put it on my desktop right here. All right, let me pull this up, watch this. There you go. This is the original. My family, Dr. Umar Johnson, Prince of Pan-Africanism. We live. Detroit, Shrine of the Black Madonna, numero uno, number one. I'm out building with the guys. There we go. Shout out to the Detroit Nawapian Nation there for doing go. my security. Yes, Looking out for Dr. Umar Johnson. They have my back. Mm -hmm. Nawapians all day long. Shout out to Dr. York. You're getting out soon. Hold your head, Elder. Right. Shout go. out to the whole Detroit. Everybody who came out and showed love. Flint, Michigan, I will see you Monday, January. This is y'all's principal. He want to have a school for, for, for black boys? You guys got to be kidding me. Let me let me show you one other thing. I don't mean to get sidetracked on this, but let me show you one other thing. And there's more I can show you, but we gonna, this will be it, I promise. See this right here? U.S. Department of Justice, Criminal Division, Child Exploitation and Obscenity Section. And it gives the address, Washington, D.C., uh, 2530, gives a number, fax, uh, fax number as well. Trial results in multiple count conviction of leader of a pseudo-religious sect. This is what uh, Polite modeled himself after. He was going to be the next. And also Nature Boy, Nature Boy too. And I'm going to tell you all something. Um, one of the people that was going down this path, but the sex cult type of thing was uh, I can't remember what's this guy I can't remember his name right now, but but uh, for sure um, Nature Boy. There's trial results in multiple count 
uh, the conviction of leader of a pseudo religious sect following a three week jury trial on January 23rd, 2004. Defendant Dwight York was convicted of 10 counts, including RICO 18 uh, USC 1962 C RICO conspiracy 18 USC 1962 conspiracy 18 USC 371. Three counts of transporting minors in a interstate commerce for the purpose of criminal sexual activity, 18 U.S.C. 2423A. One count of travel in interstate commerce with the intent to engage in criminal sexual activity with minors, 18 U.S.C. Uh, 2423B. And three counts of structuring cash transactions, 31 U.S.C. 32, uh, 324A3. York, also known as Isa Muhammad. Isa Al Hadi Al Mahdi and Dr. Malachi Z. York Marrow said he has all these these uh, aliases. Well, Umar does too. The leader of the United Nation of Nuwabian Moors (UNNM) was found guilty of committing in a pattern of racketeering activity along with several indicted co-conspirators, in which the enterprise transported minors in interstate commerce from New York to Georgia and from Georgia to Florida for the purpose of engaging in criminal sexual activity and structured cash transactions, all for the purpose of providing York with power, sex with children, and money. My goodness gracious. York utilized his power as the leader of the organization to gain and to maintain access to children. York molested and sexual and essayed countless minors aged children within his organization, 14 of whom testified for the prosecution at trial. York moved or caused to be moved children from Sullivan County, New York to Putnam County. Georgia and from Georgia to Orange County, Florida, for the purpose of continuing the, sec the SA, the SM of children in his organization. York also used adult female members of his group, whom he had also previously M, oh goodness, when they were children, to bring younger children to him for unlawful sexual purposes. At sentencing, which has not yet been scheduled, York faces a total statutory maximum uh, potential penalty of 135 years imprisonment. Okay, I'll skip over all of this. Three counts. Okay, I'll skip all of this. Additionally, pursuant of eight, oh, skip, awarded the United States forfeiture of, of York's interest in property, utilizing the commission of the sex offenses, including 440 acres of property located in Eatonton, Georgia, and a residence located in Athens, Georgia. York has been detained since his arrest May 8, 2002. The case was prosecuted by Max, Maxwell Wood, United States Attorney for the Middle District of Georgia, AUSA Richard S. Uh, Moultrie and CEOS Deputy Chief Stephanie D. Thacker, Thacker. The case was investigated by FBI, FBI agents Juan Gronier and Jelani Ward, or Jelani Ward, excuse me, Jelania, and IRS agents Stan Lee and Gar Hollett. Okay, and this is the guy that Umar calls a great leader. I played that, and he also said this. My family, Dr. Umar Johnson, Prince of Pan-Africanism, we live. Detroit, Shrine of the Black Madonna, numero uno, number one. I'm out building with the guys. There we go. Shout out to the Detroit Nawapian Nation there for doing go. my security. Yes, sir. Looking out for Dr. Umar Johnson. They have my back. Mm -hmm. Nawapians all day long. Shout out to Dr. York. You're getting out soon. Hold your head, Elder. What is that? I don't know what that beat was. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I didn't mean to go on this excursion. I just I have these all these receipts. There's more too that I would like to play, but we, we got to uh, wind this down now. Uh, let me get to some of these super chats. Uh, there's a couple of comments I want to address, and then we'll finish up with the other video. And it's probably maybe about ten more minutes to the other video, so we'll be out of here real soon. But we'll be back tomorrow. We've got plenty to get into. There's a video of Umar explaining how he lost two girlfriends or three girlfriends, something like that. And, and I think it'd be uh, good to, to get with that, to deal with that one tomorrow. There's other stuff too we gotta get, we're so behind. Okay, uh, Sharita, thank you so much. D, that is all. Andrea, thank you so much. Uh, Geo Scholar, anyone notice that no one uh, from HBCUs co-signed him for or, for or even listened to him? There's a good reason for that. Yeah, Umar, he's gone on rants about this. And he talks about Deion Sanders, how Deion Sanders left the uh, HBCU Listen, I have a relative that played on that team down there and coach and he went there because Coach Prime was there. And from what uh, he's uh, talked about, uh, it's not the place to be. They even told him. And it's not that uh, th this relative uh, didn't have no street uh, in him because his daddy. Uh, well, let me stop. Goodness. Yeah. 
let me stop. I don't mean to be saying too much. Anyway, but that the, they told him when he got down there, you don't go out in and about in the, the area where the, where the school is actually at, at past eight o'clock. Whatever you got to get done before eight, you get it done before eight. You don't go out. You just don't you don't even go out after that. Uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is because Umar's talked so much about Deion Sanders and how he left this. But Deion had a plan and, and the plan is not just Colorado. I, I, he wants to position himself to where he, he can get to a big, big time college team and then uh, at some point become an uh, NFL assistant coach and maybe potentially somewhere down the line, even though I think it's a little bit later on in his career to do this, but to become an NFL head coach. He can probably become a defensive coach cornerback coach, something like that in the NFL, right? So he has plans, but Umar doesn't see it that way. But the irony is that Umar talks all this mess about Deion Sanders, but Umar didn't go to HBCU. He's gone to, what, three different colleges? He didn't go to not one HBCU. And then he talks about how, you know, we need to su be supporting these HBCUs. But Umar, you don't support these HBCUs. He tells people, yeah, you need to donate to these HBCUs. Yeah, but Umar, well, how much money have you donated to the HBCU? You ain't got no money, Craig. You ain't got no job. Wait, let, let's just take let's let's take let's set it aside. Umar, how much money have you your own personal money that you uh, earn from employment? How much money have you contributed to the FDMG school scam fund? How about that? See, he got everything to say about everybody else, including the whole HBCU issue. But he don't support HBCUs. He just runs his mouth and they don't support him either. No, no professionals, no true professionals support Umar, whether it's in the world of academia or otherwise. They don't support Umar. It's a good point. Thanks, Joe Scholar, for a super chat. Appreciate it. Real quick, people can't afford $500 a month. Uh, how come he does, he, he, I think he's saying, how he never mentions having any, or, oh, okay, I think he's saying. Uh, he never mentions having any scholarships. Catholic, uh, Catholic schools have scholarships. I don't remember him ever mentioning scholarships. I've heard him say things like there'll be discounts for if you, have more than one child, but come on now. He ain't never going to get to that point anyway. You see, but $500 a month for that impoverished community, that's crazy. That's crazy. There, there's no way. And, but he thinks he thinks that people are going to come out and pay that. He, it is, he's out there. Uh, Polite said, just ignore what York did and look at the good side. Yeah, in that video. Yeah, he did. I want to do a whole series on, on Polite and like go to the old, old videos and, and, and go through all of it, you know, because there's so much on this guy that's out there. But he he defended uh, Dr. Uh, York, uh, just like Umar talks about uh, praises uh, York talking about. He was a great leader. I, I don't know. Boy, that's that's wild. Another one was he has the most single. Uh, he has the most single handed sexual uh, S.A. cases on children in American history. OK, much uh, better said than I did. OK, thanks for the eloquently the, the eloquently stated there. I, I was all over the place. But this is this is a, a, a much better uh, phrasing of what I was trying to explain that Dr. York has the most single-handed SA cases on children in American history. Uh, Polite spoke to, yeah, one of the victims, I just played at least a part of that. And yeah, while 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 Polite was talking, it sounded like he was defending himself, like he, like last year, same, same type of verbiage. You're absolutely right about that. Okay, I want to do that real quick, get to those comments, okay? All right, so let's finish it up now. I got this other video we've been trying to get through and we should be able to get to it. Here we go. Empress... Arikana and the good brother PLO Lumumba and Julius Malema yeah. and a brother from Nigeria. They were supposed to be speaking in Ghana this weekend, yesterday, tomorrow. I don't know the date, but recently they were supposed to speak in Ghana and allegedly the president of Ghana canceled the event. Next time y'all need to have the Prince of Pan-Africanism on the lineup. Next time, y'all need to have the Prince of Pan-Africanism on the lineup. No disrespect. But if you're having a meeting of the minds with African leadership and you don't have the Western Hemisphere represented, it's not complete. You African brothers and sisters on the continent, don't be chauvinistic Pan-Africanists. Don't be bougie Pan-Africanists. Don't be elitist Pan-Africanists. Don't be discriminatory Pan-Africanists. If y'all having a Pan-African meeting of the minds and you don't have Dr. Umar Ifatunde on the lineup to represent the interests of Pan-Africanists in the Western world, then that program was incomplete anyway. You can quote me. You can tell her and you can tell them. I'm going to say it again. 
Why wasn't the diaspora represented on that four person lineup? I'm asking the question, Brother Malema, Brother what? PLO Lumumba, Empress Arikana, and my brother from Nigeria. Why wasn't the diaspora represented in Ghana for that program? Why wasn't the diaspora represented? I should have been on that lineup. Why was I not? Y'all excluding me? Y'all discriminating against Dr. Umar? Y'all discriminating against the Caribbean? Y'all discriminating against Central American? No, they're not discriminating. You're nobody. That's why, Umar. I should have been. I knew I was trying to figure out why he was going in, but he 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 won. He feels as if he's entitled. There we go. No, just... Africans and South American Africans and Canadian Africans and American Africans. I beg your pardon. I beg your That's pardon. That's exactly what I'm saying, America. And if y'all yeah, believe he, he just, I he, should he not have so been there, I welcome a debate with any one of you on the future of Pan Africanism. If y'all believe that the American Pan-Africanist is sitting up there laying in the bed, Umar, they ain't, they ain't dealing with you. I was going to use that other word, but they ain't dealing with you. You a nobody, man. Sitting up here in the bed laying down talking about you anyway. If y'all believe the Western Hemisphere, because I'm representing the entire Western Hemisphere, from the Caribbean to the South American Africans, my Central American African. <laughs> Didn't he claim someone busted out windows in an Atlanta hair salon? <laughs> it, was, it wasn't a hair salon, Lewis. Like, it was a yoga studio. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, the memories. It was a yoga studio. Hit the one. I could pull it up. I could pull it up. It was, it was such a fiasco. Anybody remember that one? <laughs> I want to pull it up so bad. I ain't going to do it. <laughs> and uh, Umar is a trip. He, he's such a trip. Anyway, thanks for the super chat. It, it wasn't a, a hair salon. <laughs> it was a yoga studio. <laughs> Y'all remember? Yeah. Well, it, it was such a, a big story, too. You ain't never seen it, Michael X? Uh, uh, okay, you want me to pull it up? I could pull it up. Let, let's, let, let me get this going right here. Hold on a second. I'll be right my back. Caribbean Africans, my Canadian Africans, I'm representing the whole West. My American Africans, why wasn't I invited to that? Why did y'all leave out the diet? This this reminds me of when he went off talking about put some, res put some respect on my name. <laughs> okay, yes, on. Why did y'all leave out the Western Hemisphere? I'm talking to... Empress Arikana, I'm talking to Julius Malema, I'm talking to PLO Lumumba, I'm talking to the brother from Nigeria. Why was the diaspora not represented in that lineup y'all had in Ghana? I'm talking to all four y'all. I'm talking to all four y'all. Why wasn't the diaspora represented? I'm talking to all, all four, four y'all. And don't get cute <laughs> with your response, because I will challenge you to a debate in your country. Now you see how Umar is reckless. Here he goes again. It's beef of the week. He's starting beef again. Y'all see this hit the one? You see what see see what he's doing? He always taking these shots, and then when someone comes back, he tries to play the victim. It just, it just goes comes full circle now. It's exactly what I said in the beginning. Here you here you have it. Don't get cute with the response. I will challenge you to a debate in your own country. Don't get cute with the response. Why wasn't the diaspora represented? Why wasn't the diaspora represented? Why wasn't the Pan-Africanists of the Western Hemisphere represented? He really thinks he's... We back to that chauvinistic continental Pan-Africanism? Are we back to that chauvinistic continental Pan-Africanism? Chauvinistic? Are we what, back what is, to... What does that have to do... You're, you're, you, what, do you, what does that have to do with anything? Chauvinistic? Who are? Bro. As, as my kids be saying. So I'm your daddy. What you talking about? Uh, bro, you're a misogynist. What are you talking about? <laughs> ooh, ooh, what, are, what are you saying? That chauvinistic continental Pan-Africanism. Don't play with me. Don't nobody want to smoke with the Prince of Pan-Africanism. Here we go. Starting. Don't talking. nobody want to smoke with the Prince of Pan-Africanism. But once again, brothers and sisters, hit the cash app. See, Dollar right sign FDMG it. school. Hit the cash app. Dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the cash app. Dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the PayPal. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. Hit the PayPal. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. Hit the PayPal. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. Let's tap in. Who tapping in? I need to eat. 
Do I got any rest of my <laughs> recommendations for Miami? You need to eat. Y'all ain't got no restaurant recommendations for me. Let me ain't nobody saying this is all flirtations. Mm -hmm. This is all queens acting feisty. Sunday's Eatery, good soul food, African place. Queens acting feisty. Sunday's fight. Eatery. Or good soul food. Wait a minute. Sunday's Eatery. Sunday's Eatery. Okay, there's a soul food joint called Sunday's Eatery in Miami Gardens. Thank you for that, family. Thank you for that recommendation. We got Sunday Soul Food. We got Sunday Soul Food. We got Sunday Soul Food. Here it go right here. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. Hit the PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. <laughs> you just be getting on there just to talk mess. Okay, let me pull up the, uh, and I'll do a screen share for this. Uh, let me pull up the, the video for the yoga studio. Thing. It, this was such a big old mess. It really was. It was down in Atlanta. I, I don't know if that was a time where he was walking around down there like a zombie. Y'all remember that? It was one of the weirdest videos, Umar videos you will ever see. Uh, but this is it right here. Let me know if you guys can hear the audio. Let me do a screen share. All right, here we go. This is from November 18th, 2020. Yeah, he was out there late at, yeah. It's going to go to to the part though. Here we go right here. here and it's in Atlanta. Peace and blessings, brothers and sisters. Peace and blessings. Can y'all hear Peace that? And blessings. It's the Prince of Pan-Africanism live in Atlanta, Georgia. I am here on the eve of my 10th anniversary. <laughs> hey, I Tata. first spoke here. In the Tata, I played that video earlier, the the uh, the Brother Wit one, okay, just to let you know. Yeah, I can pull that video up too, but he was just wandering about late at night down there. And I know where it's because me and my wife live down there uh, and we, it, where we lived, it was hood, hood anyway. Good. Anyway, but, but uh, that area down there, you don't go down there. You just don't, not at that time. <laughs> Ubar was just wandering around. He wasn't even saying nothing. Anyway, it's, it's one of the most bizarre videos. Here we go. City of Atlanta. On November the 19th of 2020. Oh, you missed it? Okay. I will never uh, let me pull that it back event. up. There was a lot of support, a lot of love. I was blessed to be able to give the people a positive and a strong message about the psychoacademic holocaust against black boys, the school to prison pipeline, the ADHD conspiracy, and the special education hustle. So I am back again, and I want to say thank you to all my brothers and sisters from Atlanta. I want to say thank you for standing by we by, by me. I want to say thank you for standing. <laughs> he he over there shook. Eh? He always shook. Okay. Real quick, Lou says, didn't he claim someone busted out? Yeah, okay, that's this one right here. We get into it right now. Uh, being a sports bar, so this reminds me of your series on Umar imitating WWE wrestlers. It's so I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Umar, he he's a trip. He really is. I mean, there, there's so many things that we can pull up about this guy that. It, it's entertaining. You know, it's weird. Some of the stuff is weird, but it's, it's very entertaining. And this this right here, it was such a, a fabrication fantasy because people did research and stuff. And, and for, well, maybe I shouldn't give it away. Let's 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 listen to what Umar says. OK, how he frames all of this. Uh, thanks for super that vegan sports. But Iceman Vamp says you do all these requests, but you never did my request with the video of him 
uh, when he got caught honking the ho- his horn. <laughs> I remember this. I'm sorry if I missed you, man. Let, let me see if I can find it uh, for folk. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I pay. It is. I call me out. Y'all call me out. I'm a, I'm, I'm a look for it. Okay. And now I gotta get. Let me get my piece of paper. You're making me look bad. <laughs> you making me look bad, I bet, man. Uh, okay. So we're gonna bring up the thing for Tata. That was uh, Umar, uh, brother Wit, and then uh, that video. Umar honking the horn was hilarious. I gotta find it though. Uh, Umar uh, honking horn. I've been having my uh for some reason my computer the uh the search function is it's, it's for some reason it's not working and and I think it has something to do with how things are archived um and there's a there's a setting I because I've, I've researched I just haven't done it yet to where uh it only has to search for a file once once it does it once it finds it it archives that path and then the next time you search for it it it, it it locates it's even it locates it quicker but for some reason and my kids they be my son and my youngest son be using my computer all the time he downloads stuff and they don't download anything he downloads stuff be doing music on here he uses it a lot so he may have done something but i got to figure that out because i could pull it up because i already know what video you're talking about but I'm, I'm gonna try to find it uh and if i don't get to it uh in this live stream uh talk the same thing if and i did play it earlier but if i can't get to it uh, i'll make sure the next live stream we're gonna get to those for two for sure okay my bad eyes man down uh thank you for soup chat as well Okay, so let's get back to this. This is this is the whole saga about the the yoga studio window getting or vandalism. With me, it has been a pleasure coming to Atlanta these past ten years, and I'm looking forward to seeing all of you tomorrow at the Yoga Skills Comedic Yoga. So it's a Yoga Skills Comedic something uh, studio, and uh, based on what happened, I think Umar ended end up not doing it. Right, if I remember, he ended up not doing it, and he blamed it on vandalism. Uh, Dominique said he he met Julius Malima a few months ago, so evidently he's not qualified to be there. There are things going on in the U.S. he won't show up for. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't even listen. Uh, well, you you would know. Uh, okay, so what you're saying is that he he met Julius Malima. Okay. Well, I don't get it though. If he met him, why is he talking greasy? You know. But but like I said before, with Umar, he thinks he's so important. He actually he really does believe that he's like this world, great world figure. That's why he buys into the whole uh, Pan-Africanism, you know, because that's supposed to be global, a global leader, if you will, like someone like Malcolm. Uh, Malcolm, later on, uh, he became a global uh, a leader. He wasn't just talking about black people here in the United States of America. Uh, in a sense, he was Pan-Africanist, in a sense. Uh, Umar wants to believe that he is that guy, but he's not. So why would they have him? They, they, they see th- a lot of people don't realize this with Umar. He'll he'll go anywhere to try to get the bag. And there was a time where he was really trying to push up on people in Africa. And there were I remember there was an event that was taking place in New York. It was some kind of a conference, and these African leaders were there. And he had to in, he had to insert himself into the conversation. He went up there. He was up there yelling and stuff, and people in the audience looking at why is this? He just he, he really believes that he's some great leader, but he's not. He's living in Mama Closet. And he believes that he's some great Pan-African leader, like global leader. So uh, I, don't, I just don't understand it. If, if he met Julius Malima, why is he up here talking greasy? But that's Umar. Ain't no telling. He, he out there anyway. Uh, thank you uh, for the Super Chat, Dominique. Uh, Tato says, Umar is a professional victim. Yeah, he sure is. He, he always plays the victim, but he takes shots at people. And then when they respond, he plays the victim. You know, And more recently with the the Vanessa Bryant situation, the, the Eminem situation, and the Ish situation, uh, he ran his mouth and he got a lot of backlash for that. Then he wants to play the victim, especially with the Eminem thing, because a lot of white people were coming at Umar because of his racist statements. But what does he do? He turns it around, try to act like he's the victim. He does that all the time. He's a, he's a professional victim. It's true. Thank you, Tata. The Geo Scholar says, I want to see the video where Umar talks about having a black room. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. He's such a, a he, he's a uh, he's a violent thinker. I don't even know if I should be saying it like that, but he does. He thinks in terms of violence. Uh, black room in the back. And that's where he said that they were going to the boys act up at the, at the trap bando of uh, FDMG that they're going to they're have a, a room in the back and they're going to pound the boys uh, chest in. That's what he said. OK, if I don't get to it, this because we got to close out. Uh, if I don't get to this one, we'll get to, to those three for sure tomorrow. OK.
Uh, let's get back to this. We got blowed off. Hold on one second. And thanks to your scouts for super. Thanks, Tata. Thanks, Dominique, Iceman, Vamp, Vegan Sports Bar. The studio, brothers and sisters. Although I am happy to be in Atlanta tonight, I also have some unhappy news that I have to share with you all. I have some unhappy news that I have to share with you all. I have some unhappy news that I have okay. to share with you all. Get to it. As you can see, brothers and sisters, I received a phone call from the owner of the location. And sometime between last night and this morning, <laughs> yeah, I remember someone this. Someone came and vandalized the business. This is a yoga skill studio where brothers and sisters come to learn how to achieve spiritual harmony to gain peace of mind. This is a beautiful place ran by a beautiful sister in our community. It is a yoga center where you go to find spiritual bliss and inner peace. And because my detractors, my cyber star- I thought Umar was gonna say that there's a place where you can go to see the Queens in the yoga shorts family. That's the place I thought he was gonna say. <laughs> it's a place where you can go and crush the cookies family. Uh, Parkers, my trolls, they didn't want Dr. Umar to be able to do his book signing. And because they were unsuccessful in stopping me in Chicago, and they were unsuccessful in stopping me in Detroit, and they and were he was unsuccessful lying about all this. stopping me in New York, and they were unsuccessful in stopping me in that turn. And that's that's the point I was going to get to. A bunch of places were vandalized down there because people went. There, people did the research. There's a bunch of people. I can't remember who who it was, but. No, there was a bunch of places that got vandalized. But Umar and his, say, here we go with the narcissism. <laughs> he has to make it about him. Like, he's so important. He has to make it seem as if his quote-unquote haters went down there and specifically targeted that yoga studio to stop him from speaking. But no, there were other places that were vandalized down there too, Umar. Th that's the point I want to get to, but it ties to what we've been saying. It's like Umar is always trying to play the victim and he wants to make everything about him and how he's being persecuted, how people are trying to stop him. And he, Vixa, he'll concoct this whole story and narrative around this just to make himself, you know, appear to be the victim. And then he gets people to support him somehow. He, 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 he uh, listen, he, he is, he, he lies so much. And this was a huge thing back then. Oh, this was, was when he was out late trying to yeah exactly. I could pull up the video, but we got to get done. <laughs> he was out late. It was so late. Cause I know that area. But the thing is, if you don't hear, you barely hear any cars out there. It's late, late down in Atlanta. It was down there by the, the, uh, the uh memorial for uh Martin Luther King in that area down there. And Umar just wandering around. We lived out me and my wife lived out lived out there. I don't like it out there at all, to be honest with you. I don't like it. We lived out there for two years. She lived out there for a while though too when, when she was uh younger. Turn the land and they were she said she said that at one of her birthday parties Usher before he got, blew up before he got big that she had sang happy birthday to her and I said no he didn't she said, no, he did. I said, no. No, he didn't sing no, he didn't sing nothing to you. Stop. I don't want to, uh-uh. Don't, don't. See, see, sometimes, ladies, you, you have to stop, okay? You have to stop with the narrative, <laughs> okay? Come on, come on now, okay? She, she said it. She said that this happened. I don't believe it. I do not believe it. I don't want it. Really, I don't. I don't want to believe it. That's really what it is. Okay. Let's just be, let me be honest about it. I don't want to hear nobody singing nothing to my wife. I don't care if she was fourteen. I don't care. She was around fourteen or something like that. Thirteen or four. I don't want to hear it. He can't sing anyway. I mean, he did good when he sang the song for the at the Kobe Bryant thing. That was he did real good on that. But other than that, he, he ain't about nothing. He, ain't, he can't sing. He can't dance. Uh, he ain't. He ain't. He, he ain't. He ain't nothing. He ain't nothing. Talking about he saying you a song. I don't want to say you have. I don't want to hear none of that. He ain't saying nothing. Anyway, where were we? I I got a little sidetracked, ladies. 
ladies and gents. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. I know one time she was downtown in Atlanta and I, we were on the phone. Uh, she had a cell phone. I was on a regular phone at the house. I might have had a cell I think I had a cell phone. No, I was on my cell phone. It was old back in the day. And uh, we were talking and, and she, she said something like, oh, hi, or something like that. Right. And I didn't know who she was talking to or anything like that. But 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 later on, we were having this conversation. It was, it was later. It might have been the next day at home. And she was like, yeah, because I was I was watching TNT and I was watching NBA on TNT. And back then it was uh, Charles Barkley, uh, Kenny Smith and uh, the other guy, uh, the Jewish guy. I can't think of his name right now. They call him the Godfather. But anyway, we were watching the show and she says, oh, that's the guy. I said, who are you talking about? That's the guy. I said, what are you talking about? He said, that's the guy that said hi to me when I was walking down. We were on the phone. And I said, what are you? Are you serious? He said, yeah, it was. I said, she was like, who is that? I said, that's Charles Barkley. She says, yeah. He said, hey, darling. <laughs> it just sound like I said, well, where was he going? She said, it was a chicken shack right there. And he went into the chicken shack. I laughed so hard. <laughs> Now, that's a true story. This whole Usher thing, I don't want to hear nothing about it, okay? <laughs> now, to, to put it in context, TNT, that's what they filmed out. They filmed it out there in Atlanta. And uh, where she was at, it was around that, that area where they have uh, the TNT. It's, it's this building, but the TNT studios are in there. So it made perfect sense. But she didn't know who. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Eddie Johnson, that, that's the guy. But uh, er, no, Ernie, Ernie Johnson. Eddie Johnson was, was a basketball player, but uh, we're talking Ernie Johnson. That, that I know. Come on now. Give me a ticket. Your pitch. Why you got to Can't you change the thing? I've been telling tell you for years. Change your thing. Good, goodness gracious. But, you know, come on. Anyway, what were we talking about? But yeah. So uh, I believe that story because I was on the phone and I heard her saying hi. But she didn't know who it was, you know, because she don't watch basketball. I think. Uh, but the whole Usher thing. Nah, that's just like that's like Umar saying that. uh What's the name? Kissed her on and kissed him on the cheek. Lauren Hill. Now, I, I just don't it, it, it. No, he did sing her happy birthday. I just don't like when she tells a story because I just don't like the idea of, you know, someone singing somebody singing a song with my wife. I don't like it. He tried it these days. I'll be in jail anyway. Let's get back to it. OK. No, no, he didn't say nothing to her. <laughs> He didn't say a doggone thing. Okay. All right. Let's get back. We got blown off. Here we go. Successful in stopping me in Newark, New Jersey. They decided to physically vandalize and destroy our sister's business. There are four window panes. Yeah. yeah. There are four window panes, brothers and sisters. They broke out the first window pane. They totally obliterated the second window pane. And then they also bust out the third window. Yeah, pane. that's who it was. Why that's was... who it was. Yeah, yeah. Iceman Vamp. Nappy Yankee went down there to investigate. And he he went down there and he he found he you know, they devalued actually he said that uh, when he was talking to the people, because he went to the person that was business next door. And uh they said that vandalism had it's a common occurrence down there. Okay, so Umar makes up this whole thanks, thanks for, for telling because I, I couldn't remember who it was. Shout out to Nappy Yankee, too. That's another one. I did. One time we, I was walk, I was listening to a Nappy Yankee vid, uh, video, and uh, Ida was like, "Oh, he's talking about Umar too." I said, "Yeah." He says he has a nice voice. I said, "Really? Really? Women don't don't say that to your man about no other man. Don't do that. Don't do that." Okay. To this day, I can't stand him. <laughs> I don't like him. <laughs> well, part of it because she though part of it though is he you can hear a little bit of accent on him, and she's from the island. So when she hears that, you know what I'm saying? She won't talk patois to me though. Anyway, let's get back to it. I'm just hating on everybody tonight. <laughs> hating on Usher, Charles Barkley, Happy Yankee. Who else? I don't know. Is this necessary? Just because a brother is coming to give a book that's going to empower parents to be able to more effectively and successfully protect their children. Why is this necessary? Because a brother is trying to open a school for black boys? Are you that jealous? Are you that envious that you would sabotage a business? Brothers and sisters, 
I'm tired of being Mr. Mm -hmm. Nice Guy. I'm tired of standing by watching people attack me and attack <laughs> people who support me and attack people who care about me. I don't bother nobody. I mind my business. Yes, I'm popular. Yes, I'm successful. Yes, depending I'm popular. on whatever I'm standard selling. you're using. Yes, I'm well known, but I'm a simple brother. I'm a yeah, laid back brother. I'm a He's humble cool. brother. I, always like I don't him, appreciate dude. this. I do not appreciate this. Atlanta, I'm not blaming you for this because we don't know if this was done by somebody in Atlanta. And even if it was done by somebody in Atlanta, a city that I've never had no issues with, a city that has always. What? Uh, where else is what the person going to be from Kansas? What? From California? Somewhere uh, Houston? What? They come down to bust out a window, Umar? Anyway. Please love Dr. Umar, a city that has always come out strong for Dr. Umar Johnson. In fact, I almost bought a school in Atlanta right before we found the location in Wilmington, Delaware. I almost ended up with a school in Atlanta. So Atlanta is the last place there where I go. expected this to happen. But as you all know, my leading trolls on Facebook, my leading trolls on YouTube, on YouTube, my leading trolls in the black community, they have been trying to sabotage my work. They have been trying to stop my work. They have been slandering me and my name. They have tried to sabotage the school. They have tried to they have tried to sabotage the fundraiser. And I'm sick and tired of it, brothers and sisters. I'm sick and tired of that, brothers and sisters. And so today I got on the phone with an attorney. I, I got on the phone with Here go attorney. Umar about to start lying, y'all. He always got a lie. He always talking crazy. He's always yeah, I, I gave a shout out to Nappy Yankee. <laughs> Boy, y'all, leave me alone. Dang. <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I, I Come on. I couldn't remember who it was. Then I, I don't, but I didn't like when my wife said that, though. I ain't going to lie. I didn't like that at all. <laughs> said, I don't want to hear that. Okay. See, my phone don't even be sending messages right. It be said, uh, try again. Your call cannot be completed. <laughs> Let me, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I pause. Let, let me go back. I got to sit these. Brothers and sisters. I'm watch so how he, tired of that, brothers and sisters. Watch how he turns it into some whole big thing. And just, just, uh, anyway. And so today I got on the phone with an attorney. I, I got on the phone with an attorney for the first time. Now, some of you are going to say, Dr. Umar, why didn't you try to get with an attorney sooner. Some of you are going to say, Dr. Umar, why didn't you get a lawyer? The reason why I didn't think get an attorney, brothers and sisters. The reason why. Yeah, I, I got a couple more cash apps too. Thank you so much, uh, MVP. I appreciate it. And BG, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Y'all awesome. Also, thank everybody who sent in uh, Super Chats uh, during the live stream. I also have PayPal link down, down below in the description. But thanks to the mods as we get ready to close out and everyone in the Cook Press chat. Thank you all so much. Let's continue. Here we go. I didn't. I hadn't been gotten attorney. It's two reasons. I, two reasons. I haven't been gotten a... Brothers and sisters. Two reasons. One reason I didn't get an attorney is because I actually believe that our people will come to their senses and stop supporting nonsense. One of the reasons I didn't get an attorney is because I actually believe that our brothers and sisters would come to their senses and, and stop promoting the nonsense because my cause is righteous and what I stand for is righteous. And I'm very serious about our work. And with the war against black children, I really thought that black people would step in and step up and say, leave that brother alone. He's doing something that nobody else is doing. He's doing something that nobody else is doing. And he's who, who said it earlier? He's always playing the victim. He's all he's a professional victim. And here we go. Tata, you said it. He's a professional victim. That's all he do. And none of this, this ain't got none. None of this has anything to do with this goof. I'm sorry. It ain't got nothing to do with Umar. I mean, what, what you got on these? I don't know, these huge reading glasses on. I need to give me some new glasses. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie at all. He's definitely doing something that nobody else in the conscious community is doing. Leave that brother alone. Yeah, that's he why said I it. didn't call any attorney. That's why I didn't do anything, brother, because I said 
this will fall by the wayside, sister. What, what were you talking about, kid? For what? What are you, what are you talking about? I said, this will fall by the wayside. They will come to their senses. Yeah, Umar act like it's his yoga studio. <laughs> Umar, can you imagine Umar doing yoga? My mind start glitching. Start sniffing and blinking. Can you imagine this guy? What are you talking about? Umar act like he's a, has his own yoga studio. He up there eating McDonald's. <laughs> Take your left hand and reach into the bag. Stretch your wrist, stretch your wrist very good. Reach down and get that fry, grab that fry. Bring that fry out the bag. Stretch out your mouth. <laughs> this is his show. Everything be food. Get the hog and dosh. Get the hog and dosh. Take the spoon, stretch it. Stretch the ice cream out. Stretch, stretch. Take the ice cream, put it on the cheesecake. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? Umar, he acting like it's his. I was going to say gym. <laughs> Umar got a yoga gym. That's what it is. Here we go. They will see that what we're doing is important and they will leave me the hell alone. But that doesn't happen. It's only gotten worse. That <laughs> hasn't happened. It's only gotten worse. Okay. He's such so a today, pride, baby. All right. I finally decided to pick up the phone and speak with an attorney. For the first time, I shared the names of my leading detractors, the information I have about them. For the first time, I spoke with an attorney today to share with them the slander and the cyberbullying, the stalking, the sabotage, the rumor spreading, the character. Hey, wait a minute, Umar. Just to be clear, you're the one who was issuing physical threats of violence and dox my personal information. That was you. that you're the one who went on slander com campaigns saying that I was not only gay, but also that I was a uh, uh, PED, if you will. You said that on the Lord Jamar show. Fascination, the level, the libel, and so forth and so on, brothers and sisters. So I don't know where this is going to lead. The attorney is confident that we can put it into this. The attorney <laughs> yeah. is very confident. No, no. No, real quick, into. Jay the Light, and we're almost done. Jay the Light Secret, he did say that they were going to teach yoga classes at FDMG, though. And I'm not making that up. Hit the one. He said that they were going to have, they're going to teach yoga classes. And Umar said, he didn't say FDMG, we're going to have a state of the art yoga studio. He did say that they were going to have a state of the art music studio. And they had Maria up there lately, uh, recently up there talking about how they were going to change. He was considering turning the main office for a school for black boys, turning that into a music studio. For Maria and her friends. That's what Umar said. But he did say that they were going to have yoga classes up there at FDMG. I kid you not. Yeah, I'm not making it up. There you go. And thanks for the super chat. Okay, we got to finish now. Okay, we, we way over time. I wanted to do two hours. We're already at this. Three. The attorney actually wondered why I didn't say anything sooner, but I had to explain to the attorney I didn't think it would go this far. They were, you know, the videos never bothered me. I don't care what people think about me, I don't care about videos. And then they started sabotaging my work, sabotaging the school, sabotaging my profession, sabotaging my events. But I still said this will end. Umar, I ain't never done none of that. I just give commentary and critique. That's it. And encouragement. I try to encourage you to do the right thing. So all this other stuff, I don't know what you're talking about. And now for the first time, brothers and sisters, in a city that I love and in a city that loves me. For the first time, brothers and sisters, in a city that I love. What does this have to do with the broken window? I'm trying to figure that out. Love in a city that loves me. Atlanta, Georgia, they have decided to come and destroy this sister's business. Why would you do this? This black woman didn't do nothing to you. If you got a problem with Dr. Umar, you take it out with Dr. Umar. You don't harm this sister's business like this. Okay? I'm happy to be in Atlanta, brothers and sisters. My spirits are not low. My spirits are not low, but I just feel bad, though, because I brought this upon this sister. I feel very bad that I brought this upon this sister for the first time in my history. My enemies have gone so far as to vandalize and destroy your business. Okay? This is a felon. It has nothing to do with this guy. He is. He's a chronic liar. These windows being busted have nothing to do with Umar whatsoever. This is a felony. Vandalism of a business is a felony. And you will be brought to justice, brothers and sisters. Whoever did this will be brought to justice. The police have come out. They have taken a report. The area is under surveillance. 
They also believe that they may have caught the suspects on camera, suspect or suspects. They're going to be checking the video footage. This is exactly what he said about the windows at FMG years later, the windows at FMG being busted out. We have footage. Remember this? This guy. It's the same thing over and over again. In this again. neighborhood, they do have city cams up, so they may have it. We have to wait to hear back. They from may the have investigators it. here with the city of Atlanta police department. We have to wait to hear from the investigators here at, from the city of Atlanta police department. But guess what, brothers and sisters? We're not going to let this stop us. We're not going to let this stop us. <laughs> so tomorrow's book signing. Yeah, Rebecca, it'd be funny if they showed video and then Umar threw the <laughs> He was the one up there throwing rocks through the way. That'd be hilarious. Has went from being a book signing to raise funds for Dr. Umar's various programs to a book signing to raise money to repair this window. This is on me. This is on me. I told the sister, I'm going to repair your, your storefront. Those three windows that they bust out, these are double pane windows, brothers and sisters. I told them, I'm going to get this fixed. This is on me. This is on me. So when y'all come out tomorrow to get your book, just know that before any of that money is used on anything else, first thing we're going to do is get the sister's windows repaired. I promise you that. That is on me. These windows will be repaired. Watch this. These windows will be repaired, brothers and sisters. Okay, so come out tomorrow and help us raise money to get the Comedic Yoga Skills Studio right here on Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard fixed up and repaired. Two to eight tomorrow, Dr. Umar's in Atlanta, black parent advocate. Nobody going <laughs> to stop us. Ain't nobody going to stop us, brothers and sisters. That was wrong. <laughs> that was wrong what they did. You yeah. had no right to hurt that sister's business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had no right to hurt that sister's business. So Atlanta, come on out. Two to eight, South Carolina, come on out. Uh, Florida, exactly. Come on out. Alabama, come on out. What's up, man? Two to eight, it's going to be nothing but love. We got queen mothers coming through. They're going to have refreshments. We're going to have some music, and we're going to have a good time. And we're going to raise this money to get this sister's business fixed up. Okay, we're going to raise this money to get this sister's business See? fixed up. That's what we're going to do. If anybody has any leads on who may have done this, although the- Why don't you just pay out your pocket? Why you got to raise money? See how he turns it into a money grab for himself. And he never proved that he got anything fixed either. By the way, they should have insurance to fix it anyway, right? This makes sense. But Umar, this is what I was going to say. What Umar, he does, he has to play the victim. He try to act like he's the martyr. He's the he's the hero. I'm going to fix this. But then what does he do? He, he has to turn it into a money grab for himself. Meanwhile, it didn't have nothing to do with him because there was other uh, buildings down there that got vandalized. Nap Yankee went down there and talked. He, 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 he went down there and actually talked with people. The police may have the footage. Please reach out to Dr. Umar. 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858. Tomorrow, Thursday, November the 19th, Dr. Umar's 10-year anniversary in Atlanta. Dr. Umar's 10-year anniversary in Atlanta. Come and get your copy of the most important book for Black parents this decade. Black Parent Advocate, The Art of War for Dealing with America's Public and Charter Schools. The books are $50. Cash, app, credit card, okay, 50. or cash. Crazy. Cash, app, credit card, or cash. Brothers and sisters, okay, I will see you all tomorrow. I'm going to go get some rest. I just came from visiting Dr. King's grave, but I'm in Atlanta. The show will go on. We will see you all tomorrow. Peace and God bless. All right. Uh, by the way, I have the video of him down there where he was down there walking around like a straight zombie. And he went down there real quick. Uh, let me just show a little bit of this. Here is a follow up video that Umar did. Watch how he takes it even further. This guy, he's, he's. Peace and Black Power family. Good Garvey Day to you all. This is the Live following day. From Hotland to Georgia. I am here. Yeah, he was down there late. It Beautiful was, it was really late. <laughs> no rain today. Not that rain is a negative thing. I that raw cash. All the brothers and sisters in the city. <laughs> cash app, credit card, or raw I cash. Deeply, all the brothers and sisters here in the city of Atlanta and across the state of Georgia who have been reaching out to me ever since I. This guy is such a drama queen. He is. Everything is drama. Drop the video. Last evening, live from yeah, he, he, yeah. the yoga skills, comedic yoga studio. <laughs> last night, I've got number phone calls. 
text messages. He should he yeah. should write a book. He should write a book. One hundred ways to get free money. He he knows he's a professional at that. He he know how to get that raw cash. <laughs> Yeah, he just woke up. Uh, get the picture. Come on. Why well, can't listen? Who is this? Dinero Jones. Come on, man. Money Jones. It, come on, man. Please. If you can do that for me, I'll really appreciate it. <laughs> Hot cash, raw cash, smoke cash. <laughs> Yeah, that's why he liked that that white woman. He called her gorgeous because she had the big old hands. <laughs> he got some big old hands. <laughs> he liked that. It, it, it's just, all right. Let me go ahead. <laughs> Here we go. Those inboxes. Brothers and sisters telling me, Doc, we didn't know, but we are on deck. We will be stopping into the book signing today. We will be posted around the corner. I will be in my car watching. I see anything strange, I'm putting the team in action. <laughs> Literally hundreds of communications overnight from hundreds. Black Atlanta. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Hundreds of communications. They're going to be you, waiting in their cars, sisters. ready to go into action. We need to come together. That's the way <laughs> we need to support <laughs> one another. That's the way we need to stand by those who stand for us. That's the way we need to stand by those who stand for us. So, brothers and sisters, I wanted to let y'all know the book signing is going on. We are pushing forward. Nothing will, nothing will sabotage, delay, or distract from today's event. On this very day, on this very day, November the 19th of 2010, I came to Atlanta, Georgia for the first time ever to speak. And I'll never forget the event. It was well attended, jam packed. My first time speaking in the city of Atlanta. That was today, November the 19th. 10 years ago and i'm here on this beautiful sunny day in scorpio season which happens to be my rising sign yeah, sun this sign guy is real, but scorpio is my rising i have a leap he has to make everything about himself everything Libra moon and a virgo and a virgo cusp so i will be out there today signing books brothers and sisters come on through in a virgo cusp as i shared with you last night Three of the four double pane windows were vandalized at the committee. Now it's three out of four. Sometime between the night before last and the morning before last. And so we the have to raise money. Last it's my responsibility. Morning. I brought this energy to the peaceful sister and her peaceful business. And until a culprit has been caught, charged, and condemned for what they did, attacking a black woman on business is my responsibility as a black man to right the wrong. So I will be paying for the repairs in full. If any of you would like to donate to the repairs, you can send your donation to dollar sign Dr. Umar Johnson, which is my cash app. See? Dollar sign Dr. Umar Johnson, or you can send your- He's such a scammer. This guy is such a scammer. He tries to get money off of anything. Including this guy. I know. I, the insurance would fix it. But Umar is just using this as an opportunity to get that raw cash. But, but, but watch this, though. This is what I thought even back then. I said... If you want to get money for her, why send, have them send it to your personal cash app? Because you don't understand he has he calls it his personal cash app, but then he also has the FDMG cash app. Okay, but he he gets them funds out of the, with the FDMG cash app too. But the point is, why don't you instead of having them send it to your personal cash app, why don't you get her cash app, her PayPal? Why don't you give her address for people to send her donations? to get the windows fixed. Doesn't make sense, but not Umar. See, he looks at it and he says, I can turn this into an opportunity to appear to be the savior and the martyr. And then I can, I can turn this into a money grab for myself. And there's no oversight. He never showed any receipts to show that he gave her any money. 
that's the thing that's interesting about Umar too. He he could show receipts on any and everything if he if he wanted to, but he doesn't. I wish I had this video. There's this video from years ago where Umar was out in Los Angeles and he was standing next to this lady and she was just, for whatever reason, she felt the need to tell people how generous Umar was. And she said that he, she's, he's given her hundreds of dollars or was it thousands of dollars? And I said in my mind, for what? Where, what what would he be giving you? Th I thought it was thousands. Anybody remember this? I thought it was thousands of dollars. And I was sitting back like, wait a minute. And then years, uh, a couple of years after I saw that video, I remember there was this woman that had dealings with Umar and she talked about how he sent her $500. And she sent me the receipt. So, you know, people who think that somehow Umar is being responsible with money, he's not. He gets the money. He uses it for whatever he wants to. And from what I was told, women that he deals with, he'll send them a little money. If you catch my drill. That's what was told to me by someone who had, and she did, because she sent me the receipts. And it's no, it's not the, the conscious stripper. This is somebody else. But anyway, uh, Umar, all, he, he has to make it about himself. Everything is about a money grab. The insurance would have paid for this. But Umar has to figure out a way to turn this into an opportunity for him to get more money out of people. And he, and he does it. He does this all the time. Window hasn't even been priced. So what's to go? Here we go. But but see, Dominique, isn't, isn't it that's the same with the the uh, Umar Johnson talking about renovations? Well, where's an itemized list on everything that needs to be renovated in price quotes? He's never provided. He never shows any receipts. Well, the same thing with this. I, I have this uh, Umar only had the audio because it was an audio interview. I'm telling too much because I'm, I'm supposed to be saving all this. But I, well, Umar. He said he that he was talking to the, the host and somehow they got on to the topic of of what what are you going to do uh, to renovate the other side of the street? And Umar says something to the effect, well, we'll just have to set up another crowdfunding for it. And that's in my, this is years ago when I saw this. And then that's when a light bulb went on off in my said, you know what he's he's going to do? He's going to carry this out for years. He's going to, that's how he's able to just keep this going. He has a plan and the plan is just to nickel and dime, nickel and dime, never get close to being completed, but to always have an excuse to get money out of people dealing with, with this fake school scam. But the other thing is he'll do it with something like this too. He really is. He's, he's slick. He's slick. And he's thought that out because when he, and we'll get to this in, in, a, in about uh, three and a half weeks, we're going to do a marathon for this. When he did the video back in 2019, February 2019, and he did, it was three videos. It was a school announcement videos, a school promo video, and it was, it was an outside tour. We're going to also pull up videos from the inside uh, tour where it was, they didn't have lights on and people walking through there is crazy. But if you guys go back and listen to the school announcement video, he specifically states that there's three phases. And what that means is that there's three phases to continue to perpetuate this fraud, this cyber crime indefinitely. The first stage y'all remember was acquisition. Well, if in 2010, he said that he was gonna, the school was gonna open in 2013, that's in 2010, he doesn't purchase a building until 2019. Okay, well then that's nine years right there. So just to get through the first phase, it's nine years, it's actually almost 10 years. It's close to 10 years, but we're just gonna go with nine years. Then he says that there's the renovation. He calls it restoration, renovation. Okay, even though he said re renovations are complete, we know that that's not the case. We've seen video evidence to the contrary. He lied about that. Now that's already four years and 11 months in. It's about to be five years into that. So for, just for the first phase, it takes nine years. We're already on, on close to year five on the second, just on the second phase. Think about this for a moment. 
And based on uh, the condition of these buildings, in order for him to get to the next phase, which is operation, we're, we're talking we're, we're, we're years and years, four, five, six, seven years away from that at the at the rate that he's going. And then you get to the point where there's operations where how is he going to pay faculty and staff? He doesn't like that. When people bring it up, he gets he gets very defensive. That's the thing he doesn't want to answer, because that's when you realize that fiscally it's up. It's impossible. There's no way that this is going to work. But see, these three phases sets up a scenario where he can he can just keep this going indefinitely. Because, see, if he says in order to to uh, renovate the other side of the, the street that he's going to do another crowdfunding, well, he's doing crowdfunding anyway. But but I'm talking about well, we probably try to set up another GoFundMe for that or that kind of thing. OK, well, how much longer is that going to take? And then you finally get to operations a decade from now, eight years from now. OK, well, then what happens next? Well, now he has to crowdfund in order to get the money to pay the faculty and staff. And this is how this is going to go on perpetually. He uses any and he's thought about this. He knows this. This is his plan. Uh, he also, I'm sure, has an exit strategy, too. But th what I'm getting at is that he will in his own twisted mind, he always he's always trying to figure out how can I get money out of people? And if I can take an event that has nothing to do with me at a yoga, a yoga studio where vandalism takes took place and I can turn that into to me being victimized and I'm they're doing this because they're trying to persecute and sabotage me, then I'll do this. I'll go ahead and do this. But I have to figure out a way to turn this into a money grab. And that's why he goes onto this thing where he's talking about. We're going to raise money. Here we go again. Just like he had to raise money for the acquisition, just like he had to raise money for the renovation of, of the one side of the street. He's going to have to raise money for the other side of the street. And then let's assume that a decade from now, he finally opens up. He's going to have to raise money to pay faculty and staff. The budget by that time, he's going to have to be pulling in uh, five, six million dollars for operating costs per year. At least if he opens up both sides of the street and even he opens up one with inflation by that time. But what I'm what I'm saying here, uh, Dominique, and you already know this, is, is that uh, this is the strategy and it just allows him to continue to perpetuate this scam and this fraud. In the meantime, he has lesser scams. And one of it is that this is one of them right here. He doesn't even know how much the windows cost, but he's already asking for donations for it. See? And he's, he's telling people to send it to his personal cash app. <laughs> you see this guy, he, he's a trip. He's such a trip. And he thinks like this. Let me say this. Then we're going to be done. I remember uh, years ago, I told people that Umar was criminal minded and there were people who were so upset. But I've always had a saying that time tells the truth. And you can't tell me that what he's doing is is not criminal. You can't tell me that. Any rational thinking person is someone who's fair. See, I've always been fair with Umar. I've also defended Umar on certain things, too. Not that often, but I will. So if someone's talking reckless and, and lying on the guy, I'll speak out against it. I've always been like that. And I will be like that. There was a time where I was upset with him, but I'm not upset with him these days. I'm not. I want the best for the guy. But any rational thinking person who is fair, you got to be fair minded about this. You realize that this guy is criminal minded because no one who is a, a, a law abiding citizen is going to go through such lengths to get money out of people. And just keep finding different ways. He's going to do a documentary. He's going to write a book called The Rules of Romance. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. The different, all the, can I show y'all one other thing be, be, before we, we finish up? Let me go pull it up. Let me play this. I'm going to be right back. Let me show you one other thing, and this will solidify it to all y'all. Okay. Because most of y'all ain't seen this. Give me one second. I'm going to be right back. Your donation to paypal.me slash Umar the Psychologist. That is paypal.me slash umar the psychologist or see that's one of his old paypal accounts you hear what he's saying umar the psychologist okay he actually has had at least three one of them got shut down because of fraud he sets up another one and it got frozen and it, this is one right i think that's this is the second one but but understand he's had many different paypal accounts too dollar sign dr umar johnson on paypal there's no period after doctor there's no period after doctor my website there's no period after doctor on my email. yeah, yeah. I, I won't be surprised if umar accidentally burned down fdmg for that money that it, well he 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 don't have no insurance because they would no no business no <laughs> insurance company going to insure these traps they're not <laughs> the buildings are still on vacant property list you can't how are you going to insure them 
You know, there's no security system. Like there's cameras, but anybody can go up in it because they would drive by because they, they will. They would go in. And it's, a, it's these are larger buildings. Uh, relatively speaking, it's not like a, a residence. It's not like a house or a small house or, or an apartment. Uh, these these are facilities that used to be school. So understand this. They drive by and the windows are boarded up. You think they're going to insure? They drive by and they go inside and they see wires hanging out. That's fire hazard. You think they're going to insure? You see, no, they, they, they wouldn't. They see the mold. Come on, money. They see mold all growing up all along the walls. You think they're going to insure these buildings? No, they're not going to insure these buildings. <laughs> but here's, let me tell you something, though, because I thought about this. This is going back years ago. It's funny because there's so many different stories that, that we can go back to. Th this is the yoga studio one. But I remember. And I, and I saw the picture recently, too, because I was going through my archives. I remember that was Umar said that there was a fire. That, that it was sabotaged, that they were trying, someone tried to burn FDMG down. <laughs> and he posted this picture. I could find it, but we, I got, cause we can go on forever. Okay. If y'all remind me tomorrow, someone remind me tomorrow, I'll pull it up. I already got to get the, I got to get Brother Wit, I got to get Umar honking the horn, I got to get uh, Black, Black, Black Room in the back, uh, the Black Room. I'm, I'm going to have it for y'all tomorrow. But Umar, he posted this picture, and presumably it's supposed to be a picture of the actual fire damage. But the picture, it looked like it was taken in like the 70s, late 70s. You can tell the difference between if you take a picture these days compared to back in the day. There's a total difference. You guys, especially like my age, you guys know like pictures from the 70s look a certain kind of way. Pictures from the 80s, you get a certain de definition. Pictures from the 90s, you get more definition. These days, you get the definition is, is way far advanced because of technology than it was back then. But he posted a picture. And it looked like the picture was from like the 1970s. And that was his way of claiming that. that and this was his, his evidence money that someone tried to burn him down. Now. I knew right away uh, that that picture was not from uh, inside the building. And I thought to myself, well, if Umar, if there was a, if someone tried to burn it down, why don't you go up in there and take your, take your camera, go in there and live stream it like you were live streaming it, all this other stuff. He never did that. He's such a scammer. And that's when I thought to myself, this guy's probably going to try to burn these buildings down as an extra strategy and then claim that it was his uh, his haters. It was people trying to sabotage. And that way he can walk away uh, scot free. We're going to have to forget another building. You know what? We're not going to be able to do this. We're going to have to do something. Make sure you donate because we got to figure it out. Maybe I'm just going to sell these buildings now. We're just going to keep we're going to put keep it pushing. And just uh, again, remember I said the three phases It's just another another possibility to continue to the scam. Uh, it, I have another video where Umar is up there and he forgets that he's live streaming and, and he's up there with, with brother Manny rest in peace. And you can hear him having this conversation with brother Manny rest in peace. And I'm paraphrasing. I can pull it up and show it to y'all, but he, he says, did you get everything from out, uh, that we were burning up in there? I'm paraphrasing. And I said, what did he say? Did you get everything? Because we kept replaying it. Did you get everything? Get all the stuff that we was burning up in there? Something like that. And I said to myself, I know what's going on here. I told you I was a kicking spot. So here's Umar talking about how they're tr people trying to burn down the buildings, but he's up in there blazing it up. And guess what? He's doing it inside these buildings. It's supposed to be schools for black. Well, I can pull up the receipt right now. I can pull it up right now. I ain't got to make nothing up. But these are supposed to be buildings for black boys to be educated. But he up in there and this to kick his spot and they up in there blazing it up. And then he he uh, he finally gets into his car and he you, you see him turn his phone over because he thinks he stopped live streaming. He turns his phone and then he sees himself. And you all should see his face in that video. <laughs> oh, my God, his face. He knew he was caught. He knew he was caught. And he says, oh, sh I forgot. Hit the one. Hit the one. Thanks, money. Let's finish this up. I told you uh, he will uh, flew a woman. <laughs> he, he will. Flew, here we go. He will flew a woman out. Yeah, he will. He, he will fly a woman out. He did. He did say that. And he's he's known for that. He, that, he did that with the conscious stripper. You know, uh, 
again, people think that he's spending money on school. No, he's spending money on his uh, his personal needs mainly. That's why the, there's still no school. And it's 14 years and counting. Uh, thanks for Super Chat uh, Money. Thanks for uh, Super Chat Dominique. Thanks for uh, Super Chat Whole Southern Cooks. A lady says, another question not asked, what's Umar's salary? That's a good question. I mean, if he's still, he's going to still be collecting donations. That's his salary in essence anyway. I mean, what would be his, be his salary? He's the principal and he's the teacher and he's all these different things. You know, I, I, I can see Umar saying something they have 150,000, 200,000. <laughs> I don't know. I, I can see him saying something like 150. I had a receipt where he was talking about he was going to go back to college to get a, a a degree, a, a law degree, and that y'all gonna pay for it. I found that receipt too. I got so many stuff. I, I've been pulling out the crates, the memories, all of the. I don't, I don't know. I mean, what do y'all think, Cook or Chat? What do you think his salary should be to close out? Uh, this is dedicated to the Cookie Crust Chat haters. <laughs> you know what's, and it's not funny, but I'm gonna tell y'all something. And thanks for that, lady. I'm gonna tell y'all something. Uh, there's a, there's people that just don't like y'all. They don't like the Cookie Crust Chat. And, and it may not, and some of them don't like me either. I get it, but there's people that they don't like y'all. I'm, I'm sure they just don't like y'all. <laughs> well, it's, it's not. What did I do? I didn't do nothing. You know, we have a good time. We don't bother nobody or nothing like that. We get together, we have a good time. But, but you know, it's uh, it is what it is. I mean, I I I, I ain't tripping. Uh, two hundred fifty thousand a dollar. <laughs> Three hundred fifty thousand a month. He, I want to get paid 100,000. I, I think 100K or more. He, that's what he'd be talking about. Okay. Okay. We got to finish this up. If y'all can, uh, let's go ahead and like the, the video. Did I get, did I finish up? Let me just play a little more of this and we're going to be done. Let me do two minutes of this and I'll just let it play and it will be done. Here we go. There's no period after doctor or my cash app. And I will put your donations, <laughs> okay, with the total zebra amount cake. That's that his, it will cost. That's the salary. That will be sent to the queen. To oh, wait, hold on. Window, to the queen to recount that it will cost Jack. And I will put your donations, okay, with the total amount that it will cost. And that will be sent to the queen to repair the windows. He said Whatever that him. total is, he will don't come even know. directly from today's book sales. The next day, he doesn't even know. He's such a scam. Minus whatever contribution any of you would like to make. So if it costs $5,000 to repair the windows, if you guys gave me a thousand, I'll be paying four. You will offset whatever that total is. So, brothers and sisters, this guy today is a very, very uh, positive day for me. It's a reflective day. Looking at the ten years I've been coming to Atlanta, all of the sold out lectures. I mean, back to back, Atlanta is just one of those cities where if I'm coming, <laughs> you're right about that. Out. That's how it has been. <laughs> I almost bought a school here in Atlanta. And I'm just glad I made it my point to be. Yeah, that's right about that. The books. We do have the books. I got to write this song for y'all. I've been meaning. Uh, to, I mean, I, I already know what it is, but I, I need to record it for y'all just for y'all. Uh, that makes no sense. Sir. Will you get your. Come on. Who is this? Dinetto something. Come on. I mean, you've got great comments, but if you can please. I was going to read that. Now I can't even go back to it. Anyway, I have this song. I, I could crush that song. 250 of them. My Atlanta faithful are nearly a thousand strong. We have 250 books. My Atlanta faithful are nearly a thousand strong. So please come on out. It doesn't cost anything to get in. Since it's such a beautiful day, I might even sign books outside. I might even sign books outside in the sun. Okay, so just come on out, brothers and sisters. Give me a hug. Give me a handshake. Bring me some lunch. Bring me some drink. <laughs> Bring me some shea butter. Bring me a t-shirt. What? What? This guy don't stop. What else? What else? He said, bring me some lunch. What else do you want him to bring you? Can you believe this guy? <laughs> Look. God. <laughs> he said. He said, bring me some shea butter. He said, bring me some Capri Sun. <laughs> you know, the kids love Capri Sun. He said, bring me some Capri Sun. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> I know what's up, information man. Me, me, me. I need some, some Capri Sun. <laughs> maybe some, maybe some honey, hungry man dinners, <laughs> some honey buns. Yeah, yeah, he said some shea butter. What kind of man? What kind of man tell people to bring up some shea butter? You got to be kidding me. I ain't going to never ask nobody to bring me no shea, but come on. That's ridiculous. Okay, I asked my wife to bring me some shea butter. That's at the nighttime, okay? <laughs> but come on, that's ridiculous. You got to be kidding me. This guy <laughs> said, bring me some zero cakes. <laughs> bring me a diaper of passy. <laughs> Bring me my high chair. He said, bring, bring me everything. <laughs> he, he said, he said, never mind. Just, just bring me everything. <laughs> bring me TV, shirts, butter, and zero cakes. He said, bring me butter biscuits. He said, bring me a copy <laughs> of hidden colors and some butter biscuits. All right. <laughs> That's what I was saying. He said, bring me some pop Also, family, I need some toenail clippers. Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't believe who I said that. He said, bring him some, some he said, bring him some, some, some shea butter. What kind of man? <laughs> he, yeah, he know he wants some children. He love, it was a treasure family. Okay, let me get him out of here. Here's my red, black, green, pacifier. RGB. Who bought got an RGB pacifier? <laughs> I know. Just be, boy, who bought me tripping? Give me your money in a peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> okay. Stop now, Fernando Rio. Stop it. Don't do that. Okay, let, let's get up out of here. <laughs> what are you talking about? The hot pockets, anything he could throw in the microwave, anything he throw in the microwave. All right, he, he yeah. One time he was asked for birthday uh, shoes back in the day. He said, "Give me some toilet, give me some skittles." <laughs> okay, toilet, I need some toiletries. It don't matter what it is, just some toiletries. Anything you got, okay, just bring it. All right, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> a couple, a couple of a couple of cans of spam would do. <laughs> he said, "Coffee, lunch, shea butter." I said, "Bring me the Easter egg with the cream inside." <laughs> okay, all right. Let me get out of here. Well, <laughs> I can't help it. I can't help it. All right, I got some blueberry off, uh, pop tarts in the thing. Uh, I go pull them out right now. But instead of bar, <laughs> I'll just play it. All right. Um, let me just replay that. We're going to be out of here. I can't believe he actually said that. Here we go. Okay, so just come on out, brothers and sisters. Give me a hug. Give me a handshake. Bring me some lunch. Bring me some drink. Bring me some shea butter. Bring me your T-shirt. Come tell me about what you're working on. Come tell me about... Bring me your T-shirt? What are you talking about? What does that mean? What does it mean to bring me your T-shirt? He didn't say a t-shirt. He said, bring me your t-shirt. Maybe I, I misheard. Hold on a second. Of them, my Atlanta faithful are nearly a thousand strong. We have 250 books. My Atlanta faithful are nearly a thousand strong. So please come on out. It doesn't cost anything to get in. Since it's such a beautiful day, I might even sign books outside. I might even sign books outside in the I don't sun. know what he was talking okay, about, so just Julia. Come on out, brothers and sisters. Give me a hug. Give me a handshake. Bring me some lunch. Bring me some drink. Bring me some shea butter. Bring me your T-shirt. Come tell me about what you He said, bring me your T-shirt. What you working on? Come tell me about how you need Dr. Umar to support you. Tell me how much, you know... Um, what? You support the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. 
But this is all about you guys, all about you guys, all about you guys today. No, it's not. You just said to bring you, bring you, bring you some pop tarts, bring you some hot pockets, bring you some shea butter. What are you talking about? It's all about you. Take a picture. I'm taking pictures with all the queens. Taking pictures <laughs> with all my strong alpha male brothers. How do you borrow the new man? rocking with Dr. Umar from the. Do you want to take pictures with the queens? Of course. We still pushing forward with the Frederick Douglass Marcus called the Academy. I do want you to hit that cash app as well. Dollar sign FDMG school. Dollar sign FDMG school. Dollar sign FDMG See, school. He all has right. to turn it into a money grab. He already asked for all these things. He asked people to donate to his personal cash app for the windows. And now he's asked for money for the boy. I'll tell you. Right. Or on your PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. And of course, you can mail your donations in. We're still looking for an HVAC. We're still looking for a black uh, HVAC. We are I in need. Oh, I forgot of a black HVAC. Uh, I for, uh, a black HVAC. Okay, I forgot about all of this. This was back in the HVAC. The, the, it, I'm, I, we're not gonna play no more. I'm just gonna finish with this. The thing with Umar is that he has three phases. And the first phase takes nine years. The second phase, we're, go we're getting into the fifth year in about uh, th three and a half weeks. There's still a third phase, too, of this school scam. But when he says things like this, it just reminds me of all the different things that have been a part of these so-called roadblocks that have been part of him finishing with the second phase, the restoration renovations. And one of the primitive ones, and before, really, there's another one too, was the blueprints, but one of the primitive ones was the HVAC. Y'all remember this? I, I, I totally forgot because there was a time where he was saying, I need to find the black H, but it, it just don't stop. And what's crazy is that here we are all these years later and there's still no HVAC. There's no functional HVAC. All, we're, in, we're going in, we're in 2024. It's about to be five years since he acquired these trap bandles in Wilmington. And there's still no age. How does that happen? How does that happen? Unless you have no intention of finishing the second phase and you want to just keep this going on so you can keep getting money out of people. And that's really what it is. That's what all this comes down to. And in between all of this, you have all of these different hangups, HVAC situation. You got the, the block party too as another distraction. You had the blueprints as a distraction. You have the electricians stealing from the black ones too, stealing from the school. That was another roadblock. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And there's still no school. And then the irony of all of this is throughout all of this time, he continuously burns bridges especially people who could help him like Lord Jamar's uh, father-in-law. And guess what? Now here we are years since the Roland Martin interview to close out and Umar is still going back at Roland Martin. Let me just look real quick. Roland Martin. I'm not going to play. It. I just want to see what the, what the uh, view count on that video is. That video has 7 million views from six years ago, the Roland Martin, and it says one-on-one -on -one with Doc, but it wasn't one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I didn't like that. Seven million views, and that's by far the most views that any Umar Johnson video has ever gotten, including The Breakfast Club. He burns bridges over and over and over again, and that's one of the reasons why there is no school, there will never be a school, but Umar will continue to collect money for a school that does not exist thank you all so much quick crush chat for tuning on and thanks everyone for sending in the, the super chats i appreciate it. also everyone who sent in cash apps. thanks to the mods for handling the business we'll be back, be back tomorrow i gotta figure out what we're gonna uh, deal with we got so much we're so behind on everything uh but i want to thank everyone for tuning on and hope you enjoyed the show if you haven't hit the like button i appreciate it. just hit that button real quick uh sob says i need the future uh the fall of umar documentary that i hope is narrated by idris elba to contain a section specifically called the hvac saga I think the person that they would be great at it would be Morgan Freeman. He would be great at that. Yeah, the HVAC saga, that was so, it was so, it's such a, a big mess and it went on for so long. And here we are, SOB, in 2024, and there's still no functional HVAC. Still no, but, but again, this is, this is part of Umar's plan. The plan is to stretch this out as long as possible so you can keep collecting money 
That way he doesn't have to get a job, doesn't have to be personally accountable for anything. He doesn't have to, to stand up as a man and support himself. And the last point I want to make, because it, it ties to this, if, if you think about it, Umar hasn't supported himself. It's been over 13 years now. And what's crazy is that he spent so much time in college. He wasn't supporting himself when he was in college. He spent years. He spent over a decade in college getting all these different degrees. And even then he wasn't supporting himself. I'm going to tell you all why. This is it. I have a video where Umar explains how he's not going to take out any more student loans. This is when he was talking about going back to get a to become a, a lawyer and how you umar john's father was going to pay for it he said it's going to cost about three hundred thousand dollars looked it up even back then that's ridiculous three hundred thousand dollars no it don't cost that much okay you go to a regular old uh, college uh, to go pick up a degree uh to to become a lawyer it's not going to cost you three hundred dollars three hundred thousand dollars okay now if you go into some ivy league school and you trying to specialize maybe but even maybe not but the point is that in that video, he tells on himself because he specifically says, I'm not going to be taking out any more student loans. Can you imagine what this guy's student loan debt happens to be? And if y'all think that he's paid stuff off, you got it. No, it's not. He hasn't. He hasn't paid that off. And so here we are. I mean, the idea of people sending him money, it's, it's not going towards opening up a school. There's still no age back. He'll just take one thing after another and he'll keep extending the date and he'll keep changing the date. And meanwhile, people keep sending him money and there's still no school. And, and here we are now, 14 years into this. It's, it's what you call a long con, a long con. Thank you so much, SOB. All right, y'all. Thank you all so much for tuning on in. Make sure y'all hit the like button as we always we had, do. Yes. Donate to the school. Dollar sign FDMG school on your cash app. 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 If you need to mail in your donation, make it payable to the FDMG Academy, P.O. Box 9634. P.O. Box 9634. P.O. Box 9634, Wilmington, Delaware. That is Wilmington, Delaware, 19809. We appreciate $1, but we would rather have 10. We appreciate $20, but we would rather have 50. We appreciate $50, but we would rather have 100. We appreciate $100, but we would rather have 200. We're trying to renovate a school, brothers and sisters. We're trying to renovate a school. We're not fixing a, we're not fixing a, fixing a flat tire. We're not fixing a flat tire. We're not opening up a penny candy shop. We're not selling water ices, okay? He said a penny candy shop. This guy is so bad. You can't get by nothing with no penny these days. The pennies are obsolete. Nickels are, are basically obsolete too. Anyway. We're not selling hot dogs. We're renovating a school. Do you understand? Do you understand? So Look at this. You see this? Thanks, Tyree. That means a lot coming from a Sith Lord. That means a lot coming from a Sith Lord like you. <laughs> but you see this? So please, brothers and sisters, give what you can. We're building an institution. Okay? We're trying to give our children a chance that we didn't have. That's what we're doing. I don't have to pin it because I didn't already told you what it is. Don't be lazy. Dollar sign FDMG school. Don't be lazy. Dollar sign FDMG school. Before I continue with my message, thank you, Sister Avanti, $10 coming on the cash app. Thank you, Sister. Next time, make it 20, but thank you for that 10. I know you barely had that. Thank you, Sister. All right. Thank y'all so much for tuning on in. I really appreciate it. I hope y'all enjoyed the show. Please enjoy the rest of the evening. We'll be back with another live stream tomorrow. Ruthless Records. FDMG is coming. FDMG is coming. FDMG is coming. It's coming. Hold on. Yeah. Nah, I got this. I got this. I
FDMG is coming. FDMG is coming. FDMG is coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, uh, let me know what, what are you what are you talking about here, Candace? Let me know what video you're talking to about talking about. If you have a title for it, I can always pull it up tomorrow. Okay, just let me know. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Oh, it's coming. FTMG is coming. FDMG is coming, thought it's personality be twerking, it's twerking. Mm -hmm. All right, look at this guy. This is y'all's principal. It's just a bunch of bull jive. All right, y'all. Thank y'all so much for tuning on in. Please enjoy the rest of the evening, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Okay, love y'all. Take care. Peace.